looking forward to the game. Sit back now and enjoy radio commentary on the first 45 minutes of Manchester United against Chelsea. And our team to guide you through all the actions, Dave Stowell, Mickey Tops. Now a ball to for Rashford, head to the Chelsea box. Rashford against Benavich and he scores! What a goal this is by Rashford. He kept his composure. A one on one with the keeper, Begovic, and he slid that ball past the advancing goalkeeper. What a goal by the youngster. I've worked the socks off United. There's still a lot to pray for in the second half. And as far as Herrera hits it, deflected goal! Goal for Manchester United! That's it, full time. It's a big Manchester United win. He played really well. It's a very solid the performance, was, was very, very good. Can he do it at Manchester United? Well, he's doing it at Manchester United now. It's like watching Brazil. Your club. Your channel. Yes, hello and welcome to Match Day on MUTV. And not just any Match Day, a very special one as we commemorate the late, great Liam Miller, who sadly lost his life at the age of just 36 to cancer. Uh, and a team of Manchester United and Republic of Ireland and Celtic legends go head to head here in beautiful Cork. And a resident of these parts, Mr. Dennis Irwin, is part of the Manchester United squad for the game. And your ex-teammates and your ex-Republic of Ireland teammates have turned out in force to honour Liam Miller's memory. Uh, absolutely, you see the quality of both teams. Um, you know, the ex-United players, so many Premier League medal winners within there, Champion League, Champion League medal winners, and the ex-Irish international Celtic legends. Uh, they've made a huge effort to come across here. The matches sell out; it's been it's sold out within an hour and a half, I think. 45,000 down in Parky Cueve. I think everybody's looking forward to it, they really are. And what were your initial thoughts when you first heard the sad news of Liam's passing? Well, obviously, I, I didn't play with Liam, but I met him a couple of times in around the area. Um, very quiet lad, just got on with his job. And obviously, when, when somebody passes away at, at 36, it's, it, it's a huge shock, in particular somebody for somebody who's so fit as well. Um, but the football community have come together it's going to be a good tribute match. I know that the people of Cork and the surrounding areas um, have supported the day very, very well. As I said, we've talked about the, the ex-players making an effort to get across here. And uh, looking forward to it, and hopefully it'll be a, a really good match and a good tribute to Liam. Yeah, it's not just uh, the people in County Cork where both you and Liam grew up and, and learnt your trade as footballers, but the footballing community as a whole of all... Uh, come together really to, to get this match on absolutely and then uh, there was a bit of a bit of fuss about the GAA which is a local Gaelic football and hurling association um, not helping out uh, at one time but now they've come to the fore so the match has been held at, at the bigger stadium Park Equi 45,000 originally going to be at Turner's Cross which holds about six so that they've done their bit and now it's up to us to go out and put a bit of a show on so everybody's come together whether it's the, the local football community the GAA you know, everybody's come together, businessmen alike, to, to make this uh, a day uh, worth remembering for Liam. Absolutely, yeah, and like we said, some stellar names uh, on the pitch here today. Now, of course, it's not just about remembering uh, and being mournful of the passing of Liam. We are also going to celebrate the career of a man who played for both of the clubs he idolised as a boy. Oh, what a pass for Liam 
Villa. Now that is classy. United have a free kick, which Liam Miller's going to take off. Good afternoon, everybody, and a warm welcome to MUTV's coverage of the Liam Miller tribute game. As we pay tribute to a young man from Cork who lived his dream of playing for Celtic, playing for Manchester United, and was taken from us at the cruelly early age of 36, a little bit earlier on this year. The game kicks off at 3 o'clock, and it should be a game to remember. I'd like to say alongside me here in the studio is his former Ireland national teammate, Alex Bruce. Um, it's still... Stunning news, isn't it, when you think it happened in February, taken away at the age of 36, and, and here we are in September, and it's still, it's still raw, really, isn't it? It's still very raw. Um, a lot of people, I think Dennis touched on it there, were, are, are very upset, and, and rightly so, to, to lose someone so fit at the age of uh, 36 with the illness that he obviously had, uh, leaving behind his, his wife, Claire, and, and three kids, um, is a really, really tough one to take. I'm just pleased that the, the players have come together like they have today, and... Hopefully they'll give him a, a, a send-off that he deserves. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just a really sad occasion. So it's a Manchester United legend side against sort of Celtic and, and the Republic of Ireland. And there are some fantastic players on show this afternoon at a packed house in Cork. And I know it's a friendly. I just wonder if we might see the odd tackle going in in this game as well. Well, with that man there, there's every <laughs> chance. With, uh, with Roy being there, uh, you can just see by the lads that are getting off the bus... Uh, some big names, um, exactly what Liam deserves. Uh, he was a great lad, and, and and you can tell that by the, the the players that have turned up from there today to go and uh, to go and put a show on, and and I'm sure they'll go and do that. Yeah, Roy Keane assisted by uh, Mickey Phelan. You see Ryan Giggs. You've got the likes of Gary Neville and Dennis Irwin, Wes Brown, Nicky Butt, Louis Zaha, Andy Cole. They're all there. They've all turned out for this game. Um, Roy Keane. Managing United, Martin O'Neill managing the sort of combined Celtic and uh, Republic of Ireland side. David May there as well. So it's going to be lively in that uh, dressing room, I'd imagine. Of course, it's always lively with Maisie anywhere. Um, be interesting to see how many minutes he gets. <laughs> he better play well because you'll be getting some stick from his colleagues back here, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Andy Cole as well involved. Dennis Irwin, he looks a, as fit as a fiddle. He looks exactly the same, looks like he's fighting weight. Exactly. He was. Uh... He's obviously kept himself in good nick, as, as you can see, a few of the lads who were getting off the bus there, they, they, uh, they don't look any different to how they used to when they turned out here at Old Trafford. So it'll be a, it'll be a good occasion, and I'm sure a lot of supporters around the world watching this game will, uh, will be interested to see how they look. Yeah, the Parky Guive, which, which usually hosts sort of hurling and, and Gaelic football, and it's the very first time is hosting an association football match. Um, and they've been given special dispensation to play it there at the, at the really de redeveloped stadium. 45,000 capacity tickets sold out in no time. Everyone wanting to, to pay tribute to Liam Miller. So let's get confirmation of the two sides. Let's go over to Cork and speak to Mark Sullivan. Yeah, well, I think the calibre of player here today just goes to show how highly regarded Liam was both as a player and as a man. For example, in the Manchester United squad, we have four of our top ten appearance makers of all time, Ryan Giggs, Paul Scholes, Gary Neville and Dennis Irwin. On the Irish and Celtic team, we've got the most capped uh, Irish player of all time, Robbie Keane, who also happens to be the country's record ever goal scorer. Uh, for example, you've got Paul Lambert, a Celtic legend, also won the European Cup with Borussia Dortmund, went on to have a, a good managerial career too. Damien Duff, the former Chelsea winger, also an Irish legend. And by the way, third on the all-time top appearance makers for Ireland, John O'Shea, he's on our team. So it's a cracking lineup on both sides. Look at the Man United team in full then. Kevin Pilkington will start in goal. Gary Neville right back. Dennis Irwin on the left. Wes Brown will start alongside Mikel Silvestre. Roy Keane, the manager, hasn't chosen himself to start in midfield. Instead, he's gone with Nicky Butt, Paul Scholes and John O'Shea. And the front three will see Ryan Giggs on the left, Louis Sahar through the middle, Alan Smith on the right. For Ireland, Paul Lambert captain to the side. Uh, Ford starts in goal. You've got Stephen Carr in there, wonderful fullback. Watch out for him. Up front, Sean Maloney will start wide right with legend Robbie Keane in the middle and Duffer, Damien Duff, on the left. But roll on, roll off subs. Expect to see plenty of changes as the game progresses. One thing we do know, both sides desperately want to win, though. You can never lose that competitive spirit as the next player. 
Mm. Two good sides there. Two very, very good sides. Two very good sides. Man United have got the work cut out. There's a, there's a, I played with the likes of Sean yeah. Maloney at Hull, who's only just retired. Damien Duff, Robbie Keane. It's a good front three. So, yeah, I hope uh, Wes and Gary Neville have had the WD-40 out <laughs> because, <laughs> because might he might it. need it. Might need it. Uh, you played with Liam Miller then um, for Ireland. What sort of, I mean, whenever I came across him, he was a real quiet lad. But was there a different Liam Miller? Yeah, without a shadow of that. Whenever I remember when I first met him, um, thought shy lad, very quiet. But then you, when you get to know him, you realise he's, he had a cheeky um, personality. He was great fun, uh, always involved with any jokes or pranks that would be going on in the dressing room behind the scenes, as footballers do. Yeah. And uh, he was just real good company and um, a good player too. He yeah. might not have got the the game time he might have wanted here at Old Trafford, but he had some big names ahead of him yeah. at the time. Um, but when you played with him and trained with him, you could see that he was a, a very, very good player. Yeah, 22 appearances he made in the end for Manchester United. So, Mark Sullivan now then looks back at the life and the career of Liam Miller. Liam Miller was born on the 13th of February 1981 and grew up here in Ovens, County Cork. As a youngster, he played both Gaelic football and soccer, but it was the latter that was his passion, with a fondness of Celtic taken from his father, Billy, a Scotsman. At the age of 15, he joined the Parkhead Club and on the 21st of May 2000, made his senior professional debut in Kenny Dalglish's last game as Hoops manager. By 2003-04, under Martin O'Neill, Liam was an established first team regular and picked up a Scottish Premier League winner's medal. It was during this season that Liam won his first of 21 caps for the Republic of Ireland in a 2-1 win over the Czech Republic at Lansdowne Road. He scored once for his country in a 3-0 win over Sweden in 2006. At the end of the 2004 season, Sir Alex Ferguson picked up the Irishman on a free transfer. He spent two seasons at United, making 22 appearances and scoring twice. Belly on. Oh, what a pass for Liam Miller. Now that is classy. And United have a free kick, which Liam Miller's going to take off. And they've added salt into the wounds because Liam Miller has scored with the free kick and United are in front. After a lone move to Leeds in 2005, Miller joined Sunderland, then under the guidance of former United teammate Roy Keane. During his spell at the Black Cats, he picked up a Football League Championship winner's medal for the 2006-07 campaign. A brief spell at QPR followed at the start of 2009 before Liam found his way back to Scotland, this time with Hibernian. A two-year spell with the Edinburgh club ensued, during which he was named in the 2009-10 PFA Scotland Team of the Year. As his time in Scotland ended, a new one began down under, as Liam signed for Perth Glory in the Australian A-League. He went on to play for Brisbane Roar and Melbourne City before returning to Ireland in 2015 here at Turner Square Stadium to play for Cork City, his hometown club. The last leg of his footballing journey took him to America where he played for the Wilmington Hammerheads and had a coaching spell at Rail Monarch. It was then he was diagnosed with cancer, a fact made public in November last year. After a short battle with the illness, he succumbed on February the 9th, just four days shy of his 37th birthday. He leaves behind a wife and three children. So, man, we're paying tribute to this afternoon, Liam Miller, the uh, tribute game kicking off at 3 o'clock in court. We'll bring it to you here on MUTV. And welcome if you're watching on uh, YouTube and Facebook as well. Uh, sometimes people say maybe his career was slightly un unfulfilled, but you think he played for Celtic, played for Manchester United, played in Australia, played in America, played for his country. Not bad. He packed a lot in, didn't he? Yeah. He, uh, 
Yeah, but he was a good player, so it doesn't surprise you that he played for the clubs that he did. Um, he obviously did very well at Celtic, got his move to Manchester United, as I touched, before, touched on before, that he might have had limited opportunities here due to the personnel around the club at the time. Yeah. Um, went and it was a success at Sunderland with Roy Keane, and then went and experienced a bit of life in Australia yeah. uh, towards the uh, later end of his career. And uh, yeah, he did. He had a great career. Yeah. Um, two interesting managers in the in the dugouts for this game as well. Roy Keane in one, Martin O'Neill in the other. And let's hear from him now. Uh, Martin, how fitting a tribute is this today for a wonderful man and footballer? Well, it's a massive tribute to him. I, I think that uh, you know it's a sellout crowd for a start. Some of the players that who are participating in the game, I think you know the uh, the quality of player playing, or well, certainly the quality of player some years ago, I think will uh, will just speaks volumes for the fact that uh, that uh, the esteem in which uh, Liam was held. Two wonderful football clubs, Manchester United and Celtic, and a passionate nation for sport, Ireland, all coming together here in beautiful Cork. It's a wonderful mix. It really is a very, very nice mix, I must admit. I think some of the players are complaining because the pitch is uh, rather, rather wider than they were expecting. Outside that, it's a great occasion. and. Uh, I just mentioned, you know, you see some of the players that have walked through this door uh, just in the last hour. Just fantastic footballers, you know. wonder what they would be worth now in this day and age. But uh, a really great turnout, both by, in terms of players and obviously fans. And on behalf of Manchester, it's always wonderful to come to Ireland because we have such a, a passionate support here in this beautiful country. Well, you do, yes, and, and Celtic in many aspects exactly the same as well too. So, but Manchester United have always uh, have been revered really in um, in these parts, and uh, and rightly so. I've I've had some fantastic footballers who have arrived, none more so than my adversary today, Roy Keane, and. Uh, but uh, not just not just in Cork, but all over Ireland. And uh, I think that uh, I mean I'm from the north of Ireland, and uh, I think George Best might uh, might just be considered one of the greatest players that's ever played for the football club. Absolutely. Thanks, Martin. It's a pleasure. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers. Appreciate that. Thank you. There you go, Martin O'Neill, who's uh, today in charge of the, the Celtic and Republic of Ireland side, and he's up against Roy Keane. Of course, they're together, aren't they, as the managerial duo for for the Republic? Yeah, and as he was just saying there, I bet he wished. He had a few names from the Ireland team there available for his selection. Now there's some uh, some very good players who've been uh, very good servants to Ireland and Celtic over the years. Yeah, that's going to go back to the uh, the players' tunnel now. I mean, John O'Shea could play for either team, could he? But he's playing for United today, and he's with Sully. Uh, John, a fantastic occasion today to pay tribute to a wonderful man. Yeah, without a doubt, and you can see what a turnout from everybody, the crowd as well. I think his family today will be uh, super proud, and uh, everyone else will be too of Liam and his achievements, but especially his family, to, to see the turnout from everyone. and Hopefully it's a great day and we all enjoy it, but uh, most importantly to remember Liam and what a special fellow he was. Yeah, 100%. And you know very well just how popular Manchester United are in these shores. Celtic too, and with mm. Irish legends, former international teammates here as well. It's a fantastic mix. Yeah, it was a great idea. And uh, obviously the people behind it, once the, they kind of got the general feel for it, for the GAA as well to get behind it and let, let the... Let the people involved, the committee, get behind it and use the stadium, because obviously Turner's Crosswell it would have been a great venue. Yeah. Um, it sold out. You can tell obviously how quickly it sold out, how popular the game was, and uh, as I said, hopefully the benefit will be long into the future for people, and especially a tri uh, fitting tribute to Liam as well. Just finally, we've grabbed you straight off the warm-up. We can see you sweating. It's going to be hard work out there, isn't it? And it's a big pitch, and both sets of players will definitely want to win because you never lose that competitive streak. No, without a doubt, and you can see it already in the dressing room. Uh, little games of two-touch going on as well. And uh, well, I'm supposed to be the fit one as well, but I'm sweating a bit too much. But it's quite a big pitch today, so uh, could, there could be plenty of substitutions, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck, mate. Thank you. Shazy, he has got a sweat on, hasn't he? he has. He's still playing, he's, for goodness sake. He's under a lot of pressure because, as I say, he's still playing. So, um, yeah, he's, he's been a great servant, hasn't he? And uh, a good friend of Liam's. So, uh, he'll be wanting to do well for him today. Yeah, I think they, they mentioned there'll be roll on, roll off substitutes, which I think is a good idea in this game. Yeah, definitely. I think. Uh, Wide pitch as well. Yeah, doesn't sound like they've done, the, done them any favours, does it? No. <laughs> no. I suppose it also shows you just what. Liam Miller meant to people that when you look at the, the, the list of players from both teams and the fact that 45,000 tickets were sold in a flash, had to move it to a bigger venue, the Parque Guiva, as I say, which doesn't usually host football matches. Um, it just shows you what people thought of him. Yeah, of course. Um, 
Liam obviously being such a great lad and obviously all the players who want to turn out and, and represent him in his game. Um, but Celtic and Manchester United coming together in Ireland, such two massively supported clubs, um, they would need a big venue. And I'm just pleased that the, the GA have, have let them use the venue and it will give uh, Liam a fitting tribute that he deserves. Yeah, and there is, as we know, phenomenal support for Manchester United in Ireland. It's, I mean, in fairness, Liverpool as well, but Manchester United in Ireland are just synonymous, aren't they? Of course. Well, Manchester United are big everywhere in the world, aren't they? But uh, when you go to Ireland, you, there's uh, so many Man United supporters. Um, I was lucky enough to play for Ireland and um, the attention that the Man United lads used to get, yeah. people like John, Liam, when we used to meet up, you could see that they were uh, really, really high thought of over there. Anybody you're in particular looking to see today? Not just on the United side, because obviously you play with a lot of the guys in the Republic uh, yes, squad and, uh, as well. Oh, there's so many, so many good names. I mean, the Man United team's littered with stars who've done very, very well. And, uh, and then you look at the Ireland team, people like Damien Duff, Robbie yeah. Keane, um, yeah. Kevin Doyle, who's just recently retired um, with a head injury, actually, I think yeah. it was. Um, so all these lads will be looking forward to dusting the boots off and, and having a good run round them. It'll be interesting to see how they do. Yeah, I mean, Robbie Keane, I mean, is any, uh, he's, he can I've still do it. I've seen him play in a charity game, yeah. uh, I think it was last week. Yeah. Um, and he looked like he, still, he could still play now at yeah. some level. So, yeah, I hope the uh, Man United back four are ready for him. Yeah. don't know whether Maisie looks as though he could still play, but he's, <laughs> he's involved as well. But, I mean, I suppose if you haven't played for a while, it would take it out of you, wouldn't it? Yeah. Big it's, time. It's a good job as rolling subs. Um, you lose your fitness very quickly and obviously the older you get just gives it that little bit of uh, makes it a little bit more difficult but um, yeah I'm sure when they get out there and have a good warm up they'll be okay but there'll be a few stiff bodies tomorrow that's for sure. I think everyone wants to see Roy Keane play as well. He's not in the Manchester United starting lineup. He's the manager. He could play as well with that number 16 on his back. I wonder if he knows the word friendly. Does he is he uh, probably not knowing Roy but um, no, he's, listen, he's, I don't think he's really had a proper uh, return to Manchester since he left, really, to Manchester United, yeah. and he's never really had a, a, um, a proper tribute game in terms of coming back much, so it'll be nice to see him in the Man United jersey again. I'm sure he'll enjoy it, um, and if I know Roy, he'll, he'll want to kick a few, that's for sure. And just a reminder, obviously, money is being raised for, for Liam Miller's family, and wife, three kids, and charities who were involved in his treatment as well. And he passed away at the age of just 36 a little bit earlier on this year. And that's what it's all about in the end, isn't it? All about in the end is raising money, raising funds for a great cause. Exactly. It's, uh, it's a great cause. I'm sure a lot of people will benefit from it. And um, as John O'Shea touched on there, it'll make um, Liam's family and, and children super proud seeing uh, such a great occasion put on for their dad. Yeah. Um, yes, it's going to be a special occasion. Liam Miller, who played, in the end, 22 times for United, um, scored two goals, and it was impressive how quickly they managed to put this together, actually, and uh, moved venues as well to the Parque Guive, which is now a very fine venue after um, it was kind of renovated in 2017. You can get 45,000 people in there, and the tickets went in no time at all. But it's also not that easy sometimes on a Tuesday afternoon just to go to a sporting event, but no trouble in Ireland. They all, they've all piled in there. Well, I'm, I'm sure a few people have asked for a little bit of time off work. And, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, with it being a Tuesday afternoon, but yeah, it's a special occasion. Um, you can see by the numbers that have turned out, there'll be a lot of people looking forward to it. Yeah, special for his family as well, and they always remember this day. They're all, this whole family will remember this day, and that's special for them after what must have been an incredibly traumatic year. But we're now ready for the Liam Miller tribute game, Manchester United against a sort of combination of Celtic and the Republic of Ireland. And uh, our commentary team, Dave Stahl, he's with Sammy McElroy. Thank you, Stuart. When Liam Miller's teachers asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up, he told them simply, a professional footballer. And when they scoffed, he became defiantly more specific. I want to play for Celtic, and Manchester United, he said. He was quietly determined, devilishly hard-working, surprisingly cheeky, and a perfect gentleman. He lived his dream, but he's been taken far, far too soon. Four days short of his 37th birthday. Everybody here today, player, coach, fan, journalist, family, friend, eager 
perhaps desperate to pay their respects, but at the same time, wishing upon wish that they didn't have to and that the need to pay tribute hadn't arisen. In an era in which footballers can get a lot of bad press, nobody has a bad word to say about Liam Miller. He was not a man who liked a lot of fuss. Indeed, he'd perhaps be a bit embarrassed by the fact that this game is even taking place. But very little ever fazed him in life, and those close to him say he had a cheeky grin for every occasion. Indeed, this is somebody who faced a fair few footballing challenges. He had to battle with Scholes and Keane for a spot in the United midfield. He forced his way into a Celtic side who'd got the better of Rangers up north. And some of the players have been talking about how they've tried to explain this tragic news to their families and to young kids specifically. Alan Smith, who plays today, summed things up very well, saying, we have to make sure the day lives long in the memory for everyone involved, just like Liam will. Some great names on the team sheet today, some great memories for all those involved of playing with Liam Miller, and indeed for many watching from the stands, Certainly an occasion to savour today, but in the saddest of circumstances. Liam was one of Cork's very own, and will shortly be led by another now, Dara McGann, a taxi driver from the city who shot to fame with his rendition of Danny Boy on Britain's Got Talent in 2014. He's battled ill health himself recently after being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and he will shortly lead us in the anthem Aaron Navia. This is where the two sides settle into their surroundings for the afternoon, prepare themselves emotionally for what they're about to do, physically as well, because many, of course, are dusting off the cobwebs to be involved today. Indeed, many dignitaries here as well. President Michael D. Higgins served as the ninth president of Ireland since November 2011. The organising committee chairman, Michael O'Flynn, lifelong friend of the Miller family and a local property developer as well. He's been praising Sir Alex Ferguson and John O'Shea in particular for their help in organising this fixture. So many, of course, were keen to get involved and to pay their respects and to come here and show the talent that they had in the past and still of course have that desire to be fit and raring to go which was a desire of course that Liam Miller had through his playing career and his levels of fitness were astounding at times which we'll discuss through the course of the commentary Sammy McElroy next to me Sammy a, a special day this and one which is obviously very sad but also a chance to celebrate the life of Liam Miller absolutely Dave. I mean what a what a tribute when you look at both sides the, the the players it's actually turned out today for Liam and the crowd well that speaks volumes I'm sure the, the Liam's family in the stadium will be very, very proud of this occasion and uh, let's hope it is an entertaining uh, game, plenty of goals and be a great tribute for the boy. All the officials are from Cork in what is a tremendous local affair. 45,000 sell out this game today, which says an awful lot for the respect that those in this great city had for Liam Miller. And it's not just a player, made them very proud but also as a person a lot of glowing tributes from people who knew him within the game but also people who shouted his name from the stands absolutely and you can see there i mean you know when you play for celtic and you play for manchester united i mean that, that that's would be loads and loads of kids would want that and and liam did that and did it very very well just to, i think you touched on before dave which he had some competition when he came to Manchester United. You know, he had the Scolzi in there, especially Scolzi in there, and um, many other players like uh, the Beckhams and stuff like that. And he just couldn't actually break break past them. And, that, and that's no 
that's no bad thing because there's not many could have done that. But Liam was a trier, he was a hundred percent there, he was a fit lad, and he did his best every time he played for Manchester United and the Republic of Ireland, he gave a hundred percent. Other dignitaries have met all those who are about to take to the field. And now, before we get properly underway, let's hear the anthems. We go a passionate outpouring from this 45,000 sellout crowd on a day of sombre reflection but also a celebration of life. Many of these players know each other very well from their playing days from either side of various different fences. So much quality on the team sheet, we'll see how much quality we get on the field very shortly indeed. Certainly, some tremendous names for some who. Maybe too young to know some of them, but they will have been told by their fathers, their mothers, and other relations of the quality. There'll be a, there'll be a few young kids in the in the, uh, in the stadium today. There, they have obviously not not known some of the players, but. Well, you just look at the surnames on the shirts and they bring back so many great memories in the red of Manchester United but also the green and white of Celtic and let's run through the team news for you the cast list on show today says says much of the regard that Liam Miller was held in most of the class of 92's headline makers are here along with a fair few treble winners in total this squad has over 5,000 appearances for Manchester United it includes four of the club's top 10 appearance makers some on the team sheet have individual stories to tell of Liam. Alan Smith, for example, signed for the Reds on the very same day. Others were just honoured to be his teammate. Gary Neville said this week, there wouldn't be much that would bring us out of retirement, but playing for Liam certainly would. As for the opposition, well, Liam Miller's impact at Celtic and for his country was huge, and so so many in green wanted to pay their respects here today too. His former Parkhead pals include Paul Lambert and Johan Mialbi and Stylian Petrov, who showed such courage in his own recent battle with illness. Irish colleagues include Kevin Kilban and John O'Shea, who have been instrumental in organising today. Shazy, of course, a former United colleague, still playing with Reading. Irish record goal scorer and appearance maker Robbie Keane leads the line. John O'Shea was originally due to play in the opposition. He is going to join Manchester United, though, today in red. We are now going to join as one for a minute's silence in Liam's memory.
A moment's silence, perfectly observed. And now it is the Irish-Celtic combination that will start us off. It's going to be Sean Maloney and Robbie Keane to get the ball rolling. The referee is Graham Kelly, who shouldn't have too much hard work to do today in terms of discipline. He's waiting for the thumbs up from the side to get us going. Some eager to get going, perhaps some <laughs> not quite sure what will happen when they do make that first sprint. Liam Miller was a Manchester United fan as a kid. He also loved Celtic and was a proud Irishman. So this matchup is the perfect way to celebrate his life. And indeed, over the next 90 minutes of play, as well as taking you through the action, Sammy McElroy and I will look back over some of the tributes to and funny stories about Liam Miller from those who knew him best. He's a little bit of a character as well, from what I hear, and um, everyone I've been speaking to about him hasn't got a bad word about him at all, so that's great. First offside of the day is against Robbie Keane. Paul Scholes to Ryan Giggs, that's a combination we haven't said for a, a little while. Always gets the mindset going of days gone by absolutely when you you know you talk about Kane and um, you know schools Giggsy um, just rolls off the way they play together for great service for the club as well won many 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 trophies it's um, unbelievable here's Stephen Carr into Robbie Keane he's just found a little bit of space there might be a fair bit of space out there today it's a Big old pitch out there, isn't it? It looks, it looks in fantastic condition. It looks a lovely stadium as well, uh, Dave. So I, I don't think there'll be any problem about the surface and whatever. I know it's, uh, I think it's a Gaelic stadium, isn't it? I think it is. And uh, in fact, it's a, a big deal that there is a football match being well, played here because they don't normally they, allow it, and that no. says a lot for. That is very true, Dave. They don't like to see football played on that surface at all. This the grass a... may be a wee bit long, but um, I'm sure that won't be a problem. Seen for a while that shot by the way Kevin Kilban meeting that left footed seen for a while this game will be staged at Cork City's seven and a half thousand capacity stadium mainly because the organization that runs Gaelic football here the GAA uh, prohibits any other sport being played in its grounds but the public spoke out really the GAA agreed to the match going ahead here another demonstration of the outpouring of love and respect towards Liam and his family since the worst happened in February Here's John O'Shea, who's played a big part in getting this match going and indeed in recruiting the personnel. Not that when uh, people knew it was happening, it was necessarily difficult to get them to say yes to it, obviously. But uh, there's an awful lot of organisation that has to go on behind the scenes to yeah. get people into one place for something like this. Well, not only that, Dave, as well. I mean, Sir Alex Ferguson played a great part in, in, in getting the... Uh, this up and running and, th and I think he would have had a great part in getting the players actually who have turned out today especially on the United side to, to pay tribute to, to, to Liam and what Sir Alex has gone through over the past whatever few months you know that's a great tribute to him as well well it's only sad that Sir Alex can't be here today due to his recent illness doctors advised him not to yeah. be here here is Dennis so into Ryan Giggs We'll see a fair few tricks and flicks, I would hope. I would hope in so. In the course of today. You've got to entertain the crowd as well. And I'm sure we'll see a few of them. Dennis Irwin and Damien Duff going toe-to-toe -to -toe there. John O'Shea back for Wes Brown. Look at some of the numbers involved with some of the players today. Wes Brown, 362 United appearances, five goals. Yeah, Nicky fantastic. Butt, almost played... 400 appearances for him. Luis Saha... Over 120. Yeah, I played with Wes um, a couple of weeks ago in Malta, and he, he had just come back from uh, from India, a season out in India, which he which he enjoyed. He's still a good he's still a good Nick Wes. John O'Shea tricking his way past Sean Maloney. Paul Scholes looking for one of those trademark raking passes towards Alan Smith, and it's Irishman David Ford who comes out to meet him. 
Damien Duff looking to uh, tempt Dennis Irwin into a challenge perhaps here. They've had a few battles over the years, haven't they, Dave? Well, he's stepping away from Dennis Irwin. Kevin Pilkington, though, taking charge at the back for Manchester United. And there are going to be some battles between younger and older players out there. You know that from your yeah. matches of this kind of late. Yeah, oh, yes. um, and, and, you know, you, you call it a friend, and I know it's a great game and a great cause, but once you get out in that football pitch, you know, the rivalry then kicks in. And, uh, and there'll be a few really trying out there today, believe me, not to let people down. Robbie Keane. Running at Wes Brown, being knocked over by Wes Brown. I mean, there's 14 years nearly between Damien Duff and Dennis Owen, for example, so... Yeah. Some intriguing clashes going on, and one there that sees a free kick go to the Celtic Irish team. Yeah, well, Robbie Keane, you know, he's... I mean, he's been a fantastic goal scorer in his time, for especially for Celtic, the Republic of Ireland as well. You know, the goals that he has scored in his career has been unbelievable. 68 goals in 146 caps for Ireland. That's not bad, is it? Record appearances, record goals. Yeah. They could do with him there at present, I'll tell you. Stylian Petrov over the free kick, but so is Ian Hart, who always tends to hit them from this kind of range, and he hits them pretty hard too, as that wall will attest. Yeah, well, as you say, Ian Hart scored a few goals from that distance in his playing career, especially at Leeds. Scored a few tremendous free kicks in the Premier League era, including well, Manchester United were on the receiving end. Yeah. Petrov opens it up for Robbie Keane. Gary Neville trying to keep him quiet here. Robbie Keane stolen a march. John O'Shea makes sure he goes no further. He's looking a little bit sharp, Keane. He's really up for this. Taking on Gary Neville there, and he's done him a couple of times there, and just to find a ball there, let Keane down. But he's the main spark at the minute. Ian Hart. Danger here for Manchester United. Sean Maloney trying to weave his magic from a similar position from which he scored for Wigan. A goal which cost Manchester United dear in the Premier League a few years ago under Sir Alex Ferguson. It that ended the title hopes. Yeah, that's right. But of course, there were better memories at Wigan as well. Ryan Giggs scoring a title clinching goal. Yeah. 2008. Here's Dennis Irwin. Now Scholes. Louis Saha dropping deep. Alan Smith coming short as well. Of course, he made that transition in his playing career from centre forward to midfield yeah, dynamo did. yeah they used to have some tackles as well smith I mean, he's a fierce competitor it was not long ago uh, he was playing at nuts county wasn't it Dave? i think that's he's right yeah maybe a manager as well and for manager spell. as well that's right here's ryan Giggs. a little bit of space for nicky burt paul skulls making the run but tried to scoop it forward for him now robbie Keane. Adding pace to a counter-attack that's building here. Kevin Kilban takes it on. Keane again, everything coming through him at the moment. At the moment, he's, he's the main man for the Celtic 11, no doubt about that. Stephen Carr charging forward from the back. This is Damien Durf, lets it go for Petrov. Carr again manages to stay onside. John O'Shea has to be alive to the danger here. All smiles in the end between him and Kevin Pilkington. Lovely little cool play there by Big Shazy there. A little head back into Pil Pilkington's uh, hands. Uh, the goalkeeper shouted there, let, let Shazy know what was going on. Cool as ice back there. John O'Shea. Three appearances for Reading this season. Including in the victory against Hull City last time out. 3-0. They won, although Shazy did get his marching orders he towards got, the yeah, end of that. They got sent off, yeah. Here is John O'Shea. Nice little touch from Louis Saha. 
Andy Cole, also wearing number nine, by the way, is on the bench for Manchester United today. A few players doubling up in number. As we often see in these kind of games. I'm sure we'll see a few substitutions as well along the way, Dave. You know, people, what you call rolling subs in a, an occasion like this. Scholes with a switch to Gary Neville. Trying to just tickle that one into the box. <laughs> steady, Gary, steady. If he had been on Sky Sports, he would have got slattered for that cross. <laughs> just making former Leeds player Ian Hart know he was there. And then troubling the crowd more than David Ford. That's why you're a fullback, guys. Well, it'd only be right if uh, we saw this back in slow motion, considering what he does for a living. Absolutely. <laughs> he, he wouldn't like to see that replay. No need to draw any lines, no. rows or circles <laughs> no, on the no, screen for that one. Not at all. It's only going one way. Well, it's fitting that we're at a Gaelic football ground, really, for today, because Liam Miller started out playing Gaelic football. He was a young attacker who'd often retreat into his side's back line to gather the ball before racing up the pitch on a solo run. And when he was safe enough away from everyone, he'd happily slow down, allowing some of the opponents to catch up before stepping on the gas again. Yeah. He's a bit, bit of a tease when he started playing in, in that particular format of the game. He was a bit cheeky, but those who played against him said he was never disrespectful. It was just that he was frighteningly quick and fit. He was. He was, he was a definite fit lad. You could see that when he played. He never stopped. He was like a box-to-box -box player. And as I touched on before, everything he did was 100%. Still in Petrov, trying sorry, to Dave, that through. So you talk about the Gaelic side of the, of the game, like with Liam Miller, also another player here for many years, Kevin Moran. Started off in the Gaelic side of things as well, and big sport over there in the south of Ireland. And it was a big loss to Gaelic football when Liam Miller actually decided to be a footballer rather than a Gaelic footballer. Maybe the same with Kevin as well. Certainly there was a, a day when there was a trial for a Cork under-16 Gaelic football team. Liam went, to wa Liam went to watch. They were a man short, so he was handed some kit, he played, he starred. But he was too young to be picked. Maybe Saha striking from distance but not really getting hold of it. He had some wonderful moments in Manchester United Red, of course, Louis Saha. Yeah, he did. Averaged a goal every three games. Now, a lot of people don't know that, Dave, a, a goal every three games, because he had a few injuries as well, didn't he? And uh, a lot of people sort of touch on the injury side of his day here, but that's not bad, one in three games. Well, especially considering, as you say, the bumps and bruises he had, but also the yeah. players he was up against trying to get exactly. into the starting line. That's right. Ian Hart for Kevin Kilban. We're not seeing too much of the high press in this game. No, I think no, we could expect that. I don't think there's anything such as high press in a game like this. We've got a Paul Scholes tackle in there, though. Referee playing advantage. Yeah. Typical Scholes, he won there, kicking somebody's ankles. Back it goes to Ian Hart. We might see quite a few switches of play today, because there's... Quite a bit of space out wide. Paul Lambert here, the captain. It does look Celtic a Island. Pitch. It does look a massive pitch there, doesn't it? It really does look wide. Space here for Sean Maloney, for Lambert. Mikel Silvestre, though, showing his strength. It's going to be a corner. Roy Keane in charge of United today, possibly the only manager brave enough not to start Roy Keane. Yeah, exactly. I'd, I'd like to see him make an appearance, I hope he does. Short corner trying to catch Manchester United unawares. We might well see Roy Keane later on in that trademark number 16 shirt. David May, Dion Dublin, Quinton Fortune, Andy Cole. Michael Clegg also on the Manchester United bench. Not bad shot, bench uh, in their day. There's a few of them wouldn't be sub there, but they? Well, that's in true. their day. Gary 
Gary Neville snapping into the challenge there with uh, Robbie Keane. <laughs> I think uh, Keane there tried a little nutmeg on Gary Neville, which didn't come off, but that's, I think, why Gary had a little chat there to him. Players don't like that ball being through the legs, so not at all. Incredible to think Gary Neville's debut was in 1992, of course, against Torpedo Moscow, became England's most capped right back with 85 appearances for his country. 16 major trophies, five years as captain, over 600 appearances. Not bad. Hey, not bad. As he put it once, not bad for a lad from Berry. That's, that's how he uh, how uh, he put it. I think that family as well, you know, was uh, really involved in cricket in their time as, was he, as well, kids. Phil could have become a cricketer, couldn't he, in particular? That's right. And, and the dad, Neville, who I knew very, very well, he was he was a decent cricketer as well, and very sporting family. Saha to Giggs, joined by Dennis Irwin. Tell you what, there'll be a right battle for free kicks on outside the penalty area if there's well, there will given be. away. Sylvester and Brown teaming up to win it back for Manchester United. In from Nicky Butts towards Alan Smith. Just taken away from him there by Richard Dunn. He was a powerhouse defender, wasn't he, David? A big Dunn in his time. Certainly Manchester was. City. Vastly experienced player, unfortunate to be on the end of quite a few own goals in the yep. Premier League era, but still a uh, very intelligent defender the way he read the game. Wasn't necessarily the quickest, which made no, the, wasn't the, the ability quickest. with the head even better. Correct. Always a big lad. Damien Duff, who was part of the Chelsea revolution, really, wasn't he? Jose Mourinho and well, it was and him and, was him and Robin, one Robin and the as wing, and they, and they did ever so well on that Chelsea side. Robbie Keane looking to slide it through for Sean Maloney. Kevin Pilkington wins the race to the ball. And Kevin Pilkington in the United goal. He was scouted playing for Harrowby United. Made his United debut for the injured Peter Schmeichel in a 3 0 win against Crystal Palace November 94. That was a game in which David May played. Dennis Irwin scored. Now goalkeeping coach at Cambridge. Nicky Butt, Paul Scholes, John O'Shea, Alan Smith. Scholes almost tiptoeing his way through. Nice bit of football there. Lovely one-touch football. Just didn't come off the final one. Just instalment of Keane versus Neville is one out by Robbie Keane this time. Ryan Giggs though steps in to win it back. Just waiting for someone to come and challenge him. So many of these players have done an awful lot since hanging up the boots. Ryan Giggs, of course, now manager of Wales. Just telling Gary Neville to get forward there, wasn't he? There's was no chance of that. <laughs> get on your bike. It took Gary 25 <laughs> minutes getting back there, never mind going forward. Saha. Dunn was in the way. Nicky Butt now with a chance. Is that a penalty? <laughs> He's given. given. He's given it. He's given it. Johan Mialbi came in with the challenge. I think Nicky exaggerated a little bit here, this, and uh, he just jumps over him. He's good at the ref. There well, there was certainly contact, wasn't there? Nicky perhaps left the leg in there, but it was uh, he has left the leg a sliding there. challenge with a bit of interest. And it's going to be Dennis Irwin to take this he Irish won. legend. He, he, don't miss. he don't never miss. lets you down. Dennis Irwin from a set play, as cool as ice, as you'd expect, slots it home to give Manchester United the lead. Yeah, it's good to see a goal as well. And Dennis, penalty, great penalty taker, Dennis. Never, ever, ever panicked. You go either side, right in the corner there, no chance for the keeper. Nice to see a goal there. I, mean, I think that'll start now and get a few more. 
Well, the roar when he was given the ball was because he is one of Cork's own, born Correct. and bred locally. Yeah. So that's a special goal for the crowd. And fitting, really, of the occasion. And there's been quite a lot of pressure going one way, coming largely from Robbie Keane. Absolutely. Paul Scholes. There you go. <laughs> he hasn't lost that's, it. That's not like Scholes, he is it? <laughs> what me? <laughs> Looking to get on with it quickly. The oh. Island Celtic side. Mickey Button gives a chance here for Kevin Kilban. Oh, what a miss! Deary me. I don't think Kevin Kilban was expecting that pass there. Just outside the six-yard box. I think he was thought of these. Uh, was it? I'm trying to think who this was, was it Maloney? Yeah, I think he thought he was going to shoot and he, he gave it to Kevin Kamban and uh, completely hacked the chance. Well, that was a comedy of errors it all was. round, wasn't it? It was. I'm sure some of the United youngsters will take Nicky Butt up on that uh, attempted pass back. back pass. Absolutely. Now that he's head of academy at the Aeon Training Complex these days. Very passionate as well on the side lanes is Nicky. Here goes Robbie Keane. John O'Shea and Nicky Butt there to try and get the ball off him. By any means, fair or foul. <laughs> a little bit of a go there from Nicky Butt. Kevin Kilban takes over, of course. We see him an awful lot on our screens these days as a pundit. Many of the players out there are in the media since hanging up the boots. Alan Smith and Louis Sara have played a few of the United Legends games in recent times. He was, yeah, I played one with him a couple of years ago in, in, in Northern Ireland, uh, Saha, and he was unbelievably sharp, Dave. Um, I think he scored a couple of goals on the day, but his condition was absolutely fantastic. And he still looks in half-decent good nick. Free kick given away there by Richard Dunn. And it's funny when you see Dennis Irwin stride up and take uh, a penalty like that, right-footed, considering he played a lot of his career at left, left back. back. Left back, that's right, for club and country. In from Gary Neville, out by Mialbi. It was just accepted, wasn't it, that, well, you can put Dennis on either side. No problem. Largely on his own here. Duff, Carr in support, here he is, An easy one though for Kevin Pilkington. That's just letting them down a little bit the minute the Celtic, once they get into the final third they're having loads of ball, loads of possession, but when they get in this final third they, their actual final ball is just letting them down from good positions. Just go back to a comment you made earlier Sammy about Phil Neville in particular with the cricket, it was uh, a point that a lot of players who played, or friends of Liam Miller who played with him, said that he was a particularly good sportsman, saying he was extremely handy at snooker and pool, for example, which I guess you play a lot. A, a lot of players, a lot of players are, and that's right, they have a lot of ex players, and players are. Some mates refused to take him on, he was too good. Some were beaten by him playing left handed. Others say they hated marking him in training because he would largely always get the better of them. They'd get hammered by their coach if they couldn't keep him quiet. Yeah. And that's something that we've heard a lot of in the last few days. If you've been reading articles or seen bits and pieces in the build-up to this game. Going back in the time there, David, you're talking about a bunch of players like finish training. You know, the, the majority of them, myself included, you know, we'd go to the snooker hall and spend all afternoon in the snooker hall. I played a lot with my big mate Norman Whiteside as well, but even in the city there's uh, Steve Kinsey, Andy May, Jim Tolmey, we go into Manchester and, and, and snooker, we, we played all afternoon, so I'm sure it still goes with certain people because there are, 
majority of the footballers I know are all good snooker players and golf as well, especially, you know, a lot of them are all great golfers as well. Yeah, certainly a fair few good golfers out there on the field today. Here's Paul Lambert, who was one of those who was one of the older heads at Celtic when Liam Miller was breaking through. Robbie Keane. Now Damian Duff. Three to look for in the middle, but a fair few red shirts back in his way. Lambert. Little scoop for Kevin Kilban. We'll see Stephen McManus very shortly, as you said earlier. Rolling subs. Everyone will get a game. Everyone probably will get a breather. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll do that. This is Louis here with his pace here. Up against Richard Dunn. Fancy Louis Saha here. Dunn gets back yeah. at him. Saha tucks it home neatly, though. Once he was away, there was never really any doubt. No. Big Dunny, I don't think, was ever going to catch him. And good finish as well. Lovely ball there from Ryan. Ryan Giggs. Big Dunn's trying to get to him, but it's just another little change of gear there from Saha in the net. Great finish. Such a high line played by the Celtic Irish side there, and one of the problems that they were going through as that ball was played through was that Johan Mialbi was really struggling with, uh, I think it was a hamstring injury, so that's the reason why the Steve McManus was there, has absolutely. now come on. Yeah, but, but Saha, fair dues to Saha, he went into that space where the big Swede left. And that's the uh, the space where we got the, the ball through from Giggs to score the goal. Quite frankly, I don't think they would have been much catching him anyway. No. Slotted nicely into the corner, though. By Louis Saha, reminiscent of actually one of Liam Miller's goals in the League Cup for United against Crewe. He scored his other United goal against Barnet in the competition. A wonderful free kick at Old Trafford at the old scoreboard end. Skulls and gigs. And now Nicky Butt. Alan Smith getting involved as well. Saha, Nicky Butt, certainly had an impact on proceedings here. Yeah, definitely. Saha with the powerful effort, not quite powerful enough in the end. Skulls, Gary Neville. Chipped in by O'Shea to Giggs, looking to tee up Alan Smith, maybe. Perhaps Gary Neville here. <laughs> Just wouldn't sit down for him, would it? No. You can see he's very rarely been in these situations, Gary, in his play, and there's, to be fair, he's having a go. Lovely ball from O'Shea there, lovely little touchdown there from Ryan. Good ball from Smith. I thought he might... Ooh. I thought he might have tried just to lob the goalkeeper there, Gary, but as I said, he's never been in them situations a lot of times in his career. Seven goals in 602 appearances, so they're perhaps not used to applying the finishing touch. No, but he did get up and down that lane and he put some magnificent crosses in for goals as well, did Neville. He had a fantastic engine for a full-back. I think he's decided he wants to play a bit further forward because yeah, he's, uh, like he's not he's not a right back right now, is he? He's playing like a right winger. I think John O'Shea might have just said, "Go up there and enjoy yourself." Away you go, yeah. Ryan Giggs tangling with Sean Maloney. Saha. Alan Smith, I suppose it's all about, on a day like this, finding the space. Yeah. And we'll, the way United are doing it now at the minute, Dave is right, it's finding the space to keeping the ball, making the Celtic lads just work a little bit harder. 
so much space as you say in this pitch today. It's unreal. Saha into Paul Scholes. And now Neville nicely cushioned down for Wes Brown. But saw the run of John O'Shea, which just stopped at the vital moment. Even Big Shays, he's making runs now into the box. It's unbelievable here, as you say. It's, uh, I can really tell you the system that we're playing today. Everyone's having an opportunity to go forward. I think it's just one of those days, isn't it, where it's a case of going out there and enjoying just go and express the yourself. moment. Absolutely. And also trying to raise some good money for the... Yeah. The Mount Hospice, where Liam passed away, Absolutely. and also for the family of Liam Miller as well. Yeah. He survived by his wife, Claire, his three children, Corey, Leo and Belle. Stephen Carr can't quite wrap his boot around the ball to get it into the box. He did that many a time when he played for Spurs, Birmingham, overlapping, up and down. Great little engine in him, and you know, he got some fantastic crosses into the box when he played. I think the referees give a free kick there, Dave. Yeah, he has done, and uh, Damien Duff's going to take it. Stephen Carr just retreating. Yeah. Back to halfway, I think, just to have a bit of a break. <laughs> Damien Duff demanding movement. Sean Maloney trying to flick it perhaps into the path of McManus. He's looking there. I think he wants a breather. He's been up and down there a few times that right side. He just looked at the bench there saying, is that enough? Well, he's probably looked at the bench and seen David May. <laughs> and said, Maisie, do you fancy it? Do you fancy a bit, Maisie, yeah. It's funny, oh. every time you're blowing about in these situations, when you start to blow a little bit, you always keep on getting the ball, which is happening <laughs> to Gary at the minute. He wants a breather, but everyone's given it. Now, Dennis Irwin. I don't think he's ever struggled in a game physically in his life, has he, Dennis? He no. looks as fit as a butcher's dog, to yeah, coin he, a phrase. He's still, he's still fit, Dennis, yeah, he is. Turns 53 in October. Yeah, he's in still good condition. But he's not far off his playing weight as well. When he played, Dave. Mickey Butt, Louis Saha. Touch for John O'Shea. Scholes. Says he's playing like a centre forward at the minute. Saha, just waiting for the moment to play that little pass through. Lovely feet from John O'Shea. Maybe he fancies one of those finishes like we saw at Highbury all those years ago. Yeah. Damien Duff. Robbie Keane was there with him. He took the longer route, which John O'Shea closed down. He's let him know about it, Keane, as well. He said he'd just keep it simple. Well, that's one thing, funnily enough, that people always praise Liam Miller for doing in the position he was in in the middle of the park someone who was he's a good passer of the ball Dave yeah super passer wasn't he yeah, and a lot a of the passer. goals he scored either were incredible thunderbolt strikes yeah 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 or the simplest of sort of passing the ball into the goal that's he right. was very good at that wasn't that's he? right that's right yeah he's good but he, for keeping the ball he he was excellent One goal for his country was against Sweden 2006. It was a top corner stunner. Dennis Irwin, John O'Shea teed up for Louis Saha. A lot of potential in that strike. Meanwhile, at the other end, once again, Robbie Keane. to set Kevin Kilban away. He's looking to tuck it in towards Sean Maloney. Flag stays down, and Pilkington does enough. I thought Lot Maloney was offside. There was a lovely little ball in there for, from Kilban, but I, I, it looked as if he was offside, but he let him go, and he just puts it by the post, and 
Celtic needed that. The Celtic and Ireland team, they needed that because that would have brought them back into the game. It's a lovely little first touch there, and he just pitched it by the far post. It was a little touch, wasn't there, from Pilkington. Just the slightest, slightest of, touches. of touches. Yeah, you're right. Having closed down the angle as well. Yeah, there is. Oh, it's just by the post. Good save. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Maloney knocks it back. Damien Duff just found the wrong coloured shirt and the boot of Gary Neville. Paul Lambert. We once said of Liam Miller that he greatly respected him because he was trying to push his way into the Celtic team past the experienced players like Neil Lennon, Stylian Petrov, Alan Thompson yeah. and Paul Lambert. Damien Duff with the ball over. Easy one for Pilkington. He said the biggest compliment I could pay him is that he wanted to learn. He wasn't disrespectful. He never thought, I've made it. No. He just wanted to improve. Well, if you look at that situation, the way you're talking about the Celtic side, David, it's the same sort of scenario at United, really, wasn't it? He tried to break into that side with so many established players in the side and who were doing brilliant. Robbie Keane twisting and turning against John O'Shea. Wes Brown tries to get stuck in as well and then Pilkington is there when United needed him. Yeah, Keane again there just breaking into the game and still got great feet. He's definitely been the danger man in the uh, Celtic and Ireland side today, no doubt about that. Gary Neville, little touch for Saha. Plenty on the bench enjoying his performance so far. Mike Phelan there as well is the assistant to Roy Keane today. Roy yeah. Keane, of course, in normal footballing life, is the assistant to Martin O'Neill, who's O'Neill. in the other dugout yeah, today. That's right, that's right. Um, when you look at the, you know, the turnout's been unbelievable, Dave, and it really the uh, respect shown for Liam and his family has been absolutely fantastic. The talent on view. Not a bad bench at all, by the way. No. I'm sure Maisie's having a few words and saying he should be on or whatever and having a go at people who aren't doing. Maisie say, I can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> He'll certainly be in the photos, won't he? No doubt, it. no doubt. Lambert's touch to Duff. So far, we've only actually seen the one change, haven't we? Yeah. Great to see the likes of Stylian Petrov out there as well. Such oh, a fantastic, a tough journey for him. Returned to football in 2016 after recovering from acute leukemia. Four years after being diagnosed with the disease. Yeah. Absolutely. Doesn't matter who you support. When you hear a story no, like, that, like that, it's that. it's inspiring, isn't it? No, no, absolutely. Paul Lambert. Champions League winner with Borussia Dortmund, of yeah, course, in his yeah, day. He was. Ian Hart. Did he play for Dortmund there when they knocked us out? Yes, indeed. Yeah. yeah. Martin O'Neill there, along with John Hartson, who was due to play today, but has got an injury, so can't, but he still wanted to be here. There are a few in that boat. He was a big, strong player, Hartson. Another one who's had his yeah. health troubles in the past, and it's uh, great to see him here and, and looking so well. He, he fought a long battle as well, didn't he, for, for health, and came through it absolutely fantastic. But that was him, Hartson. He, he played like that. He was a character. He, he, he knocked a few people around the place, I'll tell you, when he played. <laughs> Even in training, Dave. <laughs> Now he can be heard regularly commentating on Wales amongst other clubs and countries, of course, as well. Tracking the progress of Ryan Giggs and a certain Gareth Bale. Some players not holding back in this game. No, little tackle from behind there on Keane from uh, 
Wolves of West and uh, just letting them know. This is Petrov. Maloney made the little darting run. Kevin Kilban. Most in red are behind the ball now. Duff. Back it goes to Stephen Carr. Maloney's run. Pass through to Kilban. Just couldn't stab it on target. Chance there. Nice little footballer from Salt Lake in Ireland. Oh, a lovely little slide reel ball there from Mahoney and uh, just by the post. But uh, yeah, they need a goal, I think, Celtic and Ireland before half time. They've only got five minutes in which to get that before we break for a much needed rest, maybe for some, or certainly a, a chance to get together in the dressing room and reminisce. Believe it or not, Dave, half of these wouldn't want half time, to be honest with you, because once you sit down for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, they step it up and they, they, they don't want to come back out again. We will see changes, I'm sure, after the break. Back it goes to Mikel Silvestre. The player with over 360 Manchester United appearances. Funny to think that Ryan Giggs has almost got a thousand on his own. Unbelievable. Paul Scholes over 700. Gary Neville over 600. And Dennis Irwin over 500. Yeah, that's fantastic. Here's Giggs who managed to. Wriggle away from Danium Duff. And now Dennis Irwin. Giggs once again. Saha. Tried to just cushion it there for John O'Shea. Yeah. When we think of John O'Shea's Manchester United career, he played pretty much everywhere for United down through the years, including in goal. Goal, of course. he played in goal in one game, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Thwarted Robbie Keane in goal. Yeah. He's offside. Oh, he's got a play on. He was oh. two yards offside. Well, the flag <laughs> still isn't coming, so on we go. Damien Duff in towards Robbie Keane. We just forgot to take it with him. You fancy Keane in a situation like that. Lovely ball from Duff, maybe a little bit too firm for uh, Keane there, just to control and, and finish, but it was a lovely little ball from Duff. Maybe just slightly a bit hard. Yeah. Louis Saha flagged offside at the other end, and he can't believe that He's not happy he was off, and at the other yeah. end, Celtic and Ireland weren't. Yeah, absolutely. Even in a game of this nature, you don't lose that competitive spirit. No, no, not at all. Let's let him go again. Robbie Keane. John O'Shea comes across to meet him. Keane goes for goal. No surprise at all that Robbie Keane finds the net. He's been a nuisance from the start from a Manchester yes. United point of view. And he gets his goal. Yeah, but well, we talked about the Celtic and Ireland needed a goal to put them back, and he was the man who was going to do it, no doubt about that. Again, debatable if he was a yard or two offside, but I don't think the assistant referees were going to flag that. Now they're back in 2-1, just before half-time. Doesn't matter the setting. Doesn't matter how many years have passed, he has that goal-scoring knack. An incredible career. Yeah, he's had a few clubs as well, and everywhere he's been, he's uh, he, he, you know he's he's been on the goal scoring chart every every everywhere he's been. Yeah, he sort of started out banging them in at Wolves. Yeah. Then at Coventry, and then he had that brief spell over in Inter Milan. Maybe before. that's the only club Dave you could say. He, I know he wasn't there long. Yeah, just six league appearances. Didn't yeah. actually score. Yeah. Came back on loan to Leeds and hit uh, a goal every two games on loan. So then Leeds signed him up. Then it was Tottenham, Liverpool, Tottenham again. A loan spell at Celtic, 12 in 16 in the league. Yeah, the other Milan, which was, you know, it's always sort of difficult. Your culture. 
There have been some great goal scorers even before that, going back to Dennis Laws days and Joe Baker and when they went from England to Italy. Found it difficult. Even Ian Rush, the great goal scorer from Liverpool, when he went to Juventus. Bobby Keane recently, of course, playing in India in the Super League. And for ATK, his coach and player. Gary Neville to Nicky Butt. Back to Paul Scholes. John O'Shea to Nicky Butt again. John O'Shea flying forward on the overlap. And then oh, there's a Paul Scholes special. Oh, oh, oh. He's not happy about it. Only <laughs> he's not happy at all. But that's that's uh, that was a grin there from Scholesy. He's done that a few times in his career. Take someone out. Oh dear. And that's the final action of a first half in which we've seen plenty of good bits from players who have lit up many a football pitch in days gone by. Manchester United with two relatively early goals before Robbie Keane grabbed one back for the Celtic and Ireland side at the break. It's Manchester United who lead by two goals to one. Manchester United had well and truly done it. They were supreme soccer champions of Europe. At last, Matt Busby, the maestro of Manchester United, had groomed a team great enough to beat Europe's best. He was king of soccer. His wonderful 11 men were all princes. What a match, what a team. Pink is back. Signed for the RCC first when I was eight years old. From being at United and having the, the progression through those years, but not being able to carry on through that, so I left at 16 because there was nowhere else to go. And set up this new United team, and it's the first professional women's team. I'm looking forward to like this season pushing on through that and progressing. I got the opportunity to go to the Under 20 World Cup in France this year. I think that experience just getting to be part of the team and getting to come home with a bronze medal, a World Cup medal, it's just something that I'll never forget and like it's going to be special because there's not many people that can say you've got a World Cup medal and we made history at that age group so the summer and that tournament was just a brilliant experience. For the girls that are here training now I'd say like obviously because I've been there and I've been through it it's important to keep going with sport you always have to appreciate the players that you've got with you and the coaching staff and just learn as much as you can. So when I was younger, I just used to, I used to listen to the coaches, like really listen, take it all in. As long as you keep doing what you can to enjoy it and to keep performing and getting better and better, then that's the most important thing for me.
Welcome back, everybody. That was fun, wasn't it? Half time. Uh, United leading the uh, Celtic and Republic of Ireland legends by two goals to one. In case you were wondering, it was being played in real time. It wasn't being played at slow pace. So that, that really was the pace it was being played at. Uh, interesting to see some of those great, great players enjoying themselves. And some of them still look as though they could do a job, couldn't they? A few of them. Some have been really impressive. Some have been the opposite, like. Yeah, but, well, um, yes. now I think Dennis Irwin for 52 has yeah. been... Staggering how he keeps getting up and down that left flank and yeah. uh, tucked his penalty away really yeah. well. And yeah, there's some, obviously, you can tell people like Scholesy, yeah. Louis Saha, top players, and you can, st you can still see why. Yeah, well, let's take a look at the 1-0, uh, the uh, Dennis Irwin penalty. Nicky Butt here, they might want to analyse this at the Aeon training complex with some of his young players. Should we say he made the best of this? He did. He'll be saying the defender dived in, but <laughs> he nearly took his kneecaps off in the turf as well. But... <laughs> It was a nice little run by Butty into the box and, yeah, I don't know if he's quite dived or what, or whether that was his bad touch, but he's won the penalty anyway. <laughs> Look at both arms going out here. Look at yeah, that. He's, oh, yeah he's, he's been watching a few of the modern day players, I think. Yeah. And Dennis Irwin, it's funny, he's, he's walking up and you think he's going to score. There was no doubt, was there? It's amazing, the old technique's still there for Dennis and same celebration as well. It's never in any doubt, was it? He was a great free kick and penalty taker for Man United and... I certainly was one that I, I, I fancied him to tuck it away. Yeah, still fit as a fiddle at the age of 52, sending the goalkeeper the wrong way, Dennis Irwin, making it, I mean, great for him as, as, as a man of cork as well to score there. And, and your dad rang, and he, he talked yeah, in the game, he, he said, Dennis Irwin, work, yeah. Dennis Irwin play? He said he was playing, I said, Dennis is still playing left back. He went, couldn't believe it. I said, he's just scored a penalty <laughs> as well, so there you go. You know what well, the Villa may be in need of a left foot. Yeah, in need of something. Yes. Um, and then Louis Haha made it too. He was, it looked like he was running through here in slow motion as uh, uh, Richard Dunn was after him, but uh, a nicely tucked away finish in yeah. the end. I think Dunny had the big handbrake on, I think, <laughs> trying to get back there, but yeah, he managed to get into the box and it was a tidy little finish on his wrong foot as well, so tucked it away nicely. And I thought we were going to run away with it then, but obviously Celtic have come back into it. Brian Giggs, nice little. Through ball as, as well. As you'd expect. As you'd expect. Yeah. So the Frenchman threw had plenty of time to think about it, it's fair to say. Yeah. But he tucked it away into the bottom corner. I don't think Richard Dunn was going to get there, uh, in fairness. So that was 2 0, and you, you expect a res response from Celtic and then Republic side. And eventually it came, and there's no surprise really, is it, that it came from, from Robbie Keane. He's probably one of the fitter players. Yeah, it's a nice little ball through from Petrov. Robbie's got into the box. I'm not sure about the defenders, how quick they were getting back. Um, but he's come inside and it's a nice finish, as you'd expect again, from Robbie Keane. Yeah, low one sort of through, through the keeper. We've seen, goodness me, seen, it, seen him do that sort of thing so many times for so many clubs. Yeah, very difficult for the keeper with it being so close to his body, trying to get down, but, yeah, good finish. Yeah, so that makes it 2-1 at half-time. Um, there are a few other sort of half-chances as well, and it's only fair that he's a guy who, for a living now, analyses football matches. So well, let's analyse this. Gary Neville <laughs> having a couple of opportunities here. Um, maybe needs a bit of work with his shooting. Well, someone should uh, send this to Jamie Carragher and yeah. let them bring it up on uh, Monday Night Football, shouldn't they, and yeah. let him talk through it. But I don't quite know what he was thinking there, Gary. He was going for glory. and It's like a conversion in, in rugby union, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Whether he thought he was playing Gaelic or what, I'm not sure. The stadium might have... Yeah. And then um, another sort of half chance. It, was, it didn't come down for him, yeah, say that. Yeah, it didn't come down for him. I don't think he fancied on his left foot either. And yeah. Took an age to get up as well, didn't he? He did, but he was, he was well forward in the game. He wasn't <laughs> yeah. really playing right. He's actually done he? well. He's actually done well. He's been up and down. and He's had a little few looks to the bench as if to say, get me off as yeah. well. <laughs> yes. Which yes. Uh, Roy Keane's ignored, I think. Yeah, only a matter of time. Um, Kevin Kilban will be... Disappointing, he didn't find the goal as well. This was a good opportunity. I mean, the defending and Nicky. We have to we have to say what was Nicky doing? Again, here? I don't think uh, Nicky will be telling his academy players what he was doing there. I don't know what he was quite doing, but yeah, it was a, a bad miss from Kev. It, it was. I think he was rather surprised it came to him actually. But from that position, even though he's on the stretch, he'll be disappointed. Yeah, he's got to do better there. But uh, uh, Nicky's definitely got away with one. And, yeah, a, a young Kevin Kilban, I'm sure, would have oh, took that away with his left foot. Absolutely, Pilkington happy with that, and he made it save as well from uh, from Maloney. It was a slight touch on this one as well as the um, the Republic tried to to find the net. Nice through ball again. 
Don't know about the defenders getting back. <laughs> but yeah, I think he just gets a little touch on it to make it drift past the post. Another good little player, Sean Maloney. He's not been long retired, so yeah, right. neat and tidy little player. I don't think he was too happy with the little kick skulls he gave him at the end there at the yeah. end of the first half either. But uh, no, it's been quite a good game. Enjoyed it. Skulls, he can't resist it either, can he? He, he, can't. A he just <laughs> cannot. He cannot resist it. He's left it on a few, hasn't he? Yeah. As you'd expect. Yeah. Never lose it. No. So this was a close run thing, but not to be. So at half time, United leading by two goals to one. You'll see so many changes in the second half. Could be fun, particularly if Roy, Roy Keane comes on. But um, one of our goal scorers is Dennis Irwin, and uh, Sully's over there talking to him now. Uh, then half time. So far, so good. A really entertaining. A uh, game for the crowd that turned out today. Uh, absolutely, it's a big pitch out there, but uh, I think both teams are keeping the ball very well. And uh, a couple, few great goals in there as well. Um, I'm sure Roy and Mickey will make a few changes at half time, but thoroughly enjoyable and the crowd are enjoying it as well. And a lovely touch to let you have the penalty here in your home city uh, yeah. and you tucked it away lovely. Well, yeah, I mean, a long way up, but uh, to be fair to Louis, he let me have it. Well, I couldn't miss really in front <laughs> of my, my support, my home supporters, but uh, we've played very well. I mean, Butty, Scolzi and, and Giggsy in the middle of the park just keep the ball for fun and with Louis Pace up front, you know, going to break as a second goal. Um, you know, we're always a threat. But they're a good team as well, they're a young team, so we have to keep going. Absolutely. You can't lose that quality though that both teams have shown, particularly United and the treble winners on show in particular. Yeah, you never lose well, you never ever lose that quality, it's just modern nature catches up catches up with you. Um, but yeah, the lads are putting in a super effort, they've got to sell probably the strongest team we've ever had out of ex-players particularly in the middle of the park and a few more to come on so it should be a good second half yeah look forward to it. thanks Dem cheers mate mother nature catches up with you is what Dennis said it's not catching up with him that far actually no, no but as he's touched on there fair play to what everyone involved they've all had a right go haven't they it's obviously been a while for a, a certain few like Dennis for example who haven't played uh, and side on such a big pitch it'll be it'll be difficult for them and and they've, uh, they've all done very well. And what they said there, what he said there as well is that you, you never lose the quality. Yes, obviously, you lose the legs, if you like, but you don't lose the quality. And you can see that. Yeah. Little touches and the vision. Yeah, especially people like Paul Scholes, when you see him on the ball and he's spraying it around. <laughs> Perfect example of what Dennis is going on about there, the way he can still spray it around. It's just, unfortunately... Yeah, the, uh, the legs get the better of you in terms of getting around the pitch, unfortunately. Yeah, so half-time then, United uh, winning by two goals to one. An interesting second half on the way, I'm sure plenty of changes as well. So more fun and games in Cork coming up in just the next couple of minutes. He's really in the mood. And Owen, yes! 2 0. And having scored one, Cantona makes the second with just as much panache with that little stab pass forward. And Owen read it and converted it. Get closer with the new TV. Wherever you're watching, you're very welcome to Match Day Live right here on MUTV. Good to see you again. Welcome to Match Day Live. I'm Andy Goldstein, and alongside me, the former Manchester United manager, Ron Atkinson. Manchester United fans from all over the world inside Wembley this afternoon. Here in Stockholm. Let's have a look at this starting 11 and David De Gea in goal. I think the rest of the team fix itself because the, those lads have been playing really well. Let's go elsewhere in the stadium, see who Sully's talking to. It's going to be tight, but I think United will dominate most of the game. But what an opportunity for these young lads to come out and, uh, and express themselves and just say to Joe, say, this is, this is where I belong. We go with what we have. I trust the boys. As long as I'm developing and, and moving forward in my career, then, then I'm happy. He's certainly done well since he's come to the club. Every game as it comes, you know, pick up the three points. As well as the crowd here at Old Trafford today, also there's plenty of Manchester United fans watching this at the latest I Love United event, which is taking place in China. Jakarta in Indonesia. Ho Chi Minh. Bangkok in Thailand. 
very, very passionate as we've seen so far. So I think they're all looking forward to the game. Sit back now and enjoy radio commentary on the first 45 minutes of Manchester United against Chelsea. And our team to guide you through all the actions, Dave Stowell, Mickey Tops. Now a ball to for Rashford, into the Chelsea box. Rashford against Benjamin, and he scores! What a goal this is by Rashford. He kept his composure. A one on one with the keeper, Begovic, and he slid that ball past the advancing goalkeeper. What a goal by the youngster. I've left the socks off United. There's still a lot to pray for in the second half. And as far as Herrera hits it, deflected goal! Goal for Manchester United! That's it, full time. It's a big Manchester United win. They played really well. It's a very solid the performance, was, was very, very good. Can he do it at Manchester United? Well, he's doing it at Manchester United now. It's like watching Brazil. Your club. Your channel. Welcome back to MUTV's coverage of the Liam Miller tribute game in Cork. Half time there, and United are leading the Celtic Republic of Ireland legends by two goals to one. Dennis Irwin with a penalty, Louis Sahar scoring as well. Second half on the way. Let's hear from the organiser, though, of today's event. That's Michael O'Flynn, who knew Liam, Mel Liam Miller very well. I would have known Liam all my life, really, in that he, he was a next door neighbour, the Miller family, and my nearest neighbours. And obviously I, I knew him as, as a young kid when he played local, with the local team called Aero Oak for football and hurling. And he was just a real talent. I mean, Liam would have worn the county jersey in hurling and football had he stayed. So then he went off around the world. He went off to Celtic and he moved uh, to all the f extraordinary clubs. And um, I, I'm a Man United fan, have been since 1968, um, back all those years. And obviously I saw him many times over there but never expected the turn of events that happened. So when Liam was very ill in America, he came home. I was talking to his dad and his dad arranged, or obviously mentioned to Liam. And then one morning I had a message on my phone from Liam, he'd like to see me. And I spent a lot of time with him for the last few months of his life. And it, it was really having that time with him. I was very conscious of, of his passing at such a young age. And I, you know, at the funeral I met with Roy Keane, I met with Martin O'Neill, and I met with others, and we just felt we should do something. It was arranged that I'd meet Sir Alex Ferguson in Cheltenham. I go to Cheltenham every year, as lots of Irish do. And Sir Alex actually the same place every year that I am at, even though I wouldn't have known him as such. So it was arranged that I meet him, and to be honest with you, immediately after meeting him, he says, OK, let's do something. Um, I said, look, Obviously, he told me first team, first team was out, but that this legends idea and um, Sir Alex was absolutely keen this happening. I mean, the work, you know, the contact I had with him for weeks afterwards teed up the whole event. And up to the time he got ill, um, he was the driving force on the Man United side. Roy Keane then took over the mantle of um, player manager, <laughs> um, so that's really how it came about. And Sir Alex has been back in contact with the last three or four weeks now again. He's hugely interested in it. In fact, I spoke to him this morning. Michael O'Flynn, who is the um, chairman of the organising committee, saying that Sir Alex had a hand to play in this. And of course, as we all know, he made his return to Old Trafford here on Saturday ahead of the game and got really a, a spine tingling reception when he took his seat um, in the director's box and m managed to interview him on M MUTV as well. And goodness me, it's fantastic to see him. Only four months, four and a half months since he had brain surgery. It's incredible. It? And if there was anyone ever going to defy the odds and make a recovery like he has done at the age he's at, it would be Sir Alex. Um, he, was, he was very uh, complimentary of the doctors and everyone who worked on I believe they were at the game yes. as well. Um, but yeah, fantastic. And, and he looked really well, which was yeah. pleasing for everyone to see. Yeah, and what you do notice was the entire football world came together when he fell ill. And obviously, you know, there were some massive rivalries um, during the time that Sir Alex was the manager here. But all that went out of the window, didn't it, when, uh, when he fell ill? Everybody, the whole football world was together. As they should and as you would expect with such a great man in the game, uh, someone who's done what he's had, been in it for such a long time. Um, I think everyone was genuinely worried and concerned and you've seen that with the response, uh, social media, managers, everyone. He had a lot of well wishes and I, I know he's come out and said on interviews that it touched him deeply. So yeah, it was um, when something like that happens, everyone pulls together and 
everyone's just thankful he's okay. Yeah, and and terrific there is Michael O'Flynn was saying that Sir Alex was involved in this because obviously he signed Liam Miller in the first place. Of course, and obviously speaking to my dad and the, hearing little bits and pieces of how Sir Alex is, he would have definitely wanted something to do with today. He's, he, he feels a lot for his ex-players. And I'm sure he's had a huge influence in this game behind the scenes. Yeah, is it? I mean, it becomes it almost becomes a better manager every year that goes by. I mean, we were so lucky when to see so much success that he brought to this club, and, and and since he's gone, it's been difficult to get anywhere near replicating that. Well, that just shows you what kind of man he was and what kind of manager he was. I mean, to sustain a period of success like he did for a, such a long period of time, and great managers have came here, who've done very very well at previous clubs and have not quite hit the ground running like what Sir Alex did, so it's a hell of a task to follow, but I'm sure, given time, someone will do it. Yeah, it is a if slightly extended half-time um, of this game. I imagine they probably need a bit of oxygen, some of those players, after playing the first 45 minutes on that big pitch, although I think we, talking, we are going to see David May in the second half. I think Dion Dublin's going to come up, Michael Clegg as well. It's going to be fun seeing Maisie, isn't it, trying to strut his stuff on that pitch. <laughs> I'm sure it's been a while since he's been on a football pitch, so as I said before the game, he better play well because there'll be a few people here looking to give him some stick. Oh, absolutely. He sure we'll, gives it out, doesn't we, he? We so. will be giving him bags of stick. Yeah. Uh, in that first half, I wonder, were there any players who, who, who stood out for you, particularly the guys, you know, as, as Sully touched on there, some of the treble winning players who have still still got that little bit of, of class. Yeah, I mean, you never lose it, do you? I mean, they were such successful players, won so many trophies between them all. I mean, people, Mikel Silvestre, you can still see, he's got a lot of quality on the ball. Wes Brown, um, there's a litter of players who've, who've, who've done very well. And, but the one who caught my eye the most was Dennis Irwin, obviously, for yeah. his age. Incredible. All right, well, players are making their way back out. It'll be some interesting characters on that pitch in the second half. Let's go back to, to Dave and Sammy for second half commentary on this Liam Miller tribute game. Thank you, Stuart. Well, this is where the Celtic shirts have been replaced by Island shirts for the second half for the opposition. And most of the players have changed on that side of the field as well. Manchester United with a couple of alterations. David May is coming on. Dion Dublin we just saw there. And also Michael Clegg. And then in terms of the opposition, there's Maisie. Ready to get stuck in. And in terms of the opposition, eight changes on the other side of the field. And various numbers have been bandied about. A few have been changed since uh, a few of the bits and pieces were discussed a bit earlier. Our graphics operators are desperately trying to keep up, as we all are, yeah. with, uh, with names and numbers that are being switched around. So confirmation of the changes will come to you as we go on in this second half. I'm sure the United boys, Dave, don't fancy that. Eight changes in the, uh, now the Ireland side. <laughs> They'll be thinking, oh dear, here we go. A fair fresh few legs. Pairs of fresh legs out there. Kevin yeah. Doyle is one of them, by the way, who was particularly good in his day. And he's only just really retired as a precaution with. Uh, I think he had a head injury, didn't he? Yeah, it was, it was uh, some concerns about potential head injuries. And uh, therefore he hung up his boots, but still very keen to play an important role in today course as the officials now are going through all of the changes everyone in the crowd trying to work out who's on and who's off Manchester United get the ball rolling in the second half leading by two goals to one the first half was an intriguing watch for various reasons yeah well, there was some decent football played in the first half and um, you know we had three goals and I can see a lot more goals in this second half a plethora of changes for the opposition. Gary Neville has gone off to be replaced by Michael Clegg for United. David May on for Dennis Irwin. Dion Dublin on for Louis Saha. Skulls through to Dion Dublin, who we now know, of course, as one of the hosts of Homes Under the Hammer, but was one of those who was particularly versatile in his playing days. Centre half and centre forward being his main two positions, and there aren't many in the game who've had that combination. No, no, he did that. He did that as um, even as uh, before he came to Manchester United for Cambridge. That's right. Yeah, he did uh, both both jobs and did them very very well. Fantastic in the air. In from Sylvester being attacked by Michael Clegg, just couldn't quite get the right direction on the ball. 
Michael Clegg, actually someone who had left United before Liam Miller arrived, but later worked with him as part of Roy Keane's staff at Sunderland. Yeah, I thought that was a connection, Dave. I was uh, going to say about that, what was the connection there? Michael was saying this week that when Roy Keane was manager of Sunderland, he, he just wanted to bring people in who he trusted, who he could turn to in times of trouble. A lot of Miller was one of those. A lot of managers do that, Dave. People who they can trust and, and depend on and, and know exactly their character and everything about them. Here's Robbie Keane, who has stayed on the pitch, one of the few in green. Nice little pass as well to Andy Reid. Kevin Doyle on the end of this. Just couldn't quite steer it back to Keane. Another player with such yeah. good goal-scoring pedigree down the years. Absolutely, especially at Wolves. I think he was a leading goal scorer at Wolves for a few seasons. He was key to their progress, wasn't he? he? Absolutely. Ended up playing in America with Colorado Rapids. Nicky Butt being challenged there by Graham Kavanagh, one of the half time substitutes. Dion Dublin back to Ryan Giggs. Now it's Alan Smith. Out to Michael Clegg. Scholes told to shoot. Instead, he pings it to Sylvestre. Up and under from Nicky Butt. Dion Dublin happy to return the favour. That was nice. And then Butt again looks for Smith, and it's cool and calm. Well, lovely little touch there from Big Dublin. Absolutely superb. Stephen McManus it was with the chest back to the goalkeeper and just to confuse proceedings he came on in the first half wearing number four the second half he's wearing number 28 there you go sometimes that is the way in games like this yeah we often see pre-season friendlies here on MUTV and there are so many changes at the break. Paddy Crowen's marker pen's going mad. Hey, Paddy Steam will be coming going out mad. of the ears. Paddy will be going mad. He, he can't stand them changes. Gigs to John O'Shea. And now Sylvester. Another one of those players who could pop around in various different positions. He was a centre half or a left back at times, wasn't he? He did, he was. Yep. Yeah. He did that a few times. He had good pace as well, though, for a defender. Steady defender he was. David May trying to slow Robbie Keane down. He's happy to skip past most of the challenges there until Maisie bit back at him. He was, I can see that. Here's Alan Smith. Gigs to Scholes. Sylvester up against Stephen Kelly. Gigs. Alan Smith. Scholes just had to hurry up a little because of the presence of Kevin Doyle. You still see that little link up though of but gigs, schools, they know each other's game inside out. One touch, they, they know exactly where to be, where the other two players or whatever is going to be. It's great to see. Here's Alan Smith getting involved as well. Scholes once again. Surely he's going to hit one from 30 yards yeah, at some he, point. He's got to have one, unless his hamstrings are feeling a bit tight. But towards Dublin. Is Colin Healy on to Robbie Keane? Keane just finds the gap to keep the green shirts moving forward. And it goes by the head of John O'Shea. Kavanagh to Andy Reid.
two 18s going into battle there. I think Scorsi left his foot again there on Kavanagh. <laughs> Kavanagh just had a little look at him. Keane gives it and gets it back and goes for goal again. Kevin Pilkington was down early. He's still the main man, isn't he? Keane started this second half. He's involved in everything which uh, Ireland are, are throwing at United, and he's, he's, he's the main figure. He's been backed up in the middle of the park now by Colin Healy, uh, who will try and supply the ball through and then get up and join Robbie Keane. Colin Healy, a big pal of Liam Miller's. In fact, the two were playing in the local soccer side Ballin colleague AFC years and years ago and most of the team decided to dye their hair blonde before playing in a 1997 Youth Cup final and because quite a lot of them had rather dark hair it all came out a little bit yellow a little bit orange didn't quite work but it was hope the one <laughs> one, of those <laughs> one of those stories that uh, has been bandied around by a few including Colin Healy in the last few weeks leading up to this game Ian Miller always happy to get involved with the fun and games. Here's Clegg towards Dublin. And this time it's Stephen Kelly who sees it home. I remember that day when I was Northern Ireland manager and um, we were in Iceland for a game and four of my players, believe it or not, that was like the back four decided to uh, get the herd all done blonde and uh, Gary Taggart was a character in his day and he was the one and uh, he got a phone call from his missus when it was in the paper said don't come back with your hair looking like that <laughs> Dion Dublin back to Scholes that was his chance perhaps to but unleash I, one I think I think his hamstrings are a bit tight because Scholes he definitely would have let them go from them uh, the crowd are desperate from, uh, to have a shot from about 20 yards, but he, nothing yet. They will surely tempt him to have a go at some point. Nicky Butt saw the run forward of Michael Clegg, trying to force his way through. And certainly had the power to squeeze through the gap, but not the power on the finish. Well, he did well to get his shot away there. He's under pressure there. And you're right, he just didn't get the part in his shot. Played 24 times for United, 15 times from the start. There are some who wanted to play today but couldn't for various reasons, either injury or other commitments. Neil Lennon, for example, his hip side of playing Aberdeen in the League Cup, so he yeah. couldn't be here. Robbie Keane. Stephen McPhail gives it and gets it back. Once again, Keane seeing a lot of the ball. Kavanagh and Andy Reid. Not an awful lot of movement for him to aim at. No, not at all. A lot of, we have got a lot of people up behind the ball. but being hurried by Kavanagh. He'll be particularly pleased to see one of his old clubs, Cardiff City, back in the Premier League. Yeah, but not doing it too well either, Dave. Here it goes from Cunningham, way by David May. Come on, Joyce, Joyce, come on! Yes, Steve! Yes, Kelly. Cunningham appeared to be standing offside there. <laughs> two yards, two yards at least, but no. just the two yards. A assistant referee, no way. Robbie Keane through to Kevin Doyle. It was a partnership that worked so well for Ireland when the two of them were together. That's a lovely ball to find Nicky Butt, who will look in return for Dion Dublin. The pass was right there, Dave. Big D on was in. Robbie 
Keane has made the run and the flag stays down here. I think it's because it's come off Wes's head. You know. Michael Clegg stands in his way, now Wes Brown, back it goes towards Kelly. Had the combination been the other way round, that might have been 2 2. That could have been 2 2, but had it been the other way round. <laughs> Quinton Fortune, by the way, is readying himself. We've talked quite a lot about fitness on a day like today, on a pitch like this, and of oh. course, Quinton Fortune is He's a, fit lad. a fit guy, having done the London Marathon. A couple of times, hasn't he? Indeed, he's, yeah. yeah. He's a fit lad. Looks like he's going to come on perhaps for Ryan Giggs in the next few moments. Bit of a heavy touch by the Irish side and by uh, Graham Cavanagh. Gives it back to Nicky Butt. Giggs looks for Dion Dublin. And Dublin will get there. Oh. But so will David Ford. I don't think the ball just off the surface came up because I think Big Dion was just about the the lob over his head there and it, uh, the ball didn't come up as as he expected that was a great ball from Giggsy well, Dion Dublin signed for United in 1992 officially won the Premier League he hadn't actually made enough appearances but was awarded a medal because he broke his leg horribly yeah. of course which really stopped his career at United in its tracks that was a horrible horrible he said his biggest regret in football was not being at United longer. Well, the story he tells, Dave, if he didn't get injured, you mightn't have seen Cantona here. <laughs> That's the story <laughs> yes. he tells. Indeed, yeah. And of course, not only did he play at Manchester United, he also played for Celtic, he won the SPL. Brief six-month spell north of the border in 2006. Goals. Bit of room over there for Michael Clegg. Brown tried to set him away. Easy pickings though for McPhail. Now for Andy Reid. Kevin Doyle the target. Picked off neatly though by Mikel Silvestre. Paul Scholes once again. We've almost had an hour. There's a few other lads actually feeling it now, Dave. You can see, especially the ones that's played all the game. Mickey Butt forward to John O'Shea, still full of running. It's a good yeah, run out for yeah, him actually because of his suspension. Absolutely. With Reading. Absolutely. Kevin Doyle, that was neat. Just managed to skip away from Ryan Giggs, who will get a telling off. Good skill there from Doyle. Here we go. Here come some changes, and one that will make big headlines. As we see Doyle get chopped down to size by Giggs. Well, we've already seen one from Cork score in Dennis Irwin. Now we'll see another Cork lad get back on the pitch and in that iconic 16 shirt. That's great to see Roy Keane in his own turn as well coming on. I hope no one out winds him up. Dixie going off, giving the armband to, to Keane. The return in Manchester United Red of an icon. And on his home patch too. Roy Keane in the 16 shirt in Cork with the armband. Ah, fantastic, fantastic to see. Great ovation from the crowd as well. And he was a boyhood hero of Liam Miller's. Yeah. And Mark McNulty, Liam Miller's best mate as well, in goal for Manchester United for the final half an hour. 
Miller and McNulty were best friends from the age of 14. And wow. Mark McNulty was with Liam right to the end. Yeah. So fitting that he gets his chance. He is a goalkeeper by trade. He plays for Cork City. Yeah. And that's where Liam, of course, ended up back in his hometown in 2015. When he joined, he said it was the easiest decision of his career. He always wanted to return home. Just played for the one season, but he was delighted to be back on Lee side. Well, the champions, uh, the championship last year, I think, yeah, Cork. Big crunching challenge that between Dublin and Cunningham, wasn't it? That was. Keane's every touch will be cheered. Roy Keane and Paul Scholes back in the middle together. That's yeah, great to see. Just tried to not make the he did. He did. He? Especially on Robbie Keane, who wasn't too impressed with that. Every touch from uh, Roy Keane, he's getting the cheer from the crowd, which you would expect. Skulls round the corner looking for Alan Smith. One back by Andy Reid. And really on a day like this, the scoreline is rather irrelevant in many ways, isn't it, because of the... Emotions running high because of the celebration of the life of someone who sadly is no longer with us. But yeah. also, it's just about raising some good money for a, a very good cause, but also seeing some of these players pull the old shirts back on again, pull yeah. the boots on again. Absolutely. And as I said, you, say, you guys never lose your competitive spirit, do no, you? No, no, that's what I said to you before. Even though, as I said, it's for a great, great cause, this game. But uh, once you're out there and you play in front of a big crowd like today, you, you've still got your pride and you don't want to let anyone down. And this has been the case today. There's been some great names here on this pitch and uh, they're putting it all in. The effort's been fantastic. Lovely touch, that by Stephen Kelly. Very nearly set Robbie Keane through. seen too many chances in this second half. No. Maybe down the tiredness, Dave. O'Shea, Sylvester. Back it goes to Kelly. fail Tosh McKinley into Andy Reid Colin Healy keeps it moving looking for Stephen McManus Doyle being closely watched by Roy Keane little neck there as well there from Keane on Doyle. Now Robbie Keane, Kevin Danger. Doyle with him. Danger. John O'Shea trying to keep the door firmly closed. Quinton Fortune sees it behind, it'll be a goal kick. Well, Robbie Keane not uh, happy with that decision, not happy at all, he wanted a corner kick there. John O'Shea into Roy Keane. Skulls tiptoeing through a few of the challenges. It's picked up here, though, by Colin Healy. Andy Reid. And now Stephen McPhail. Another one with many clubs to his name, including Leeds United, Cardiff City. Absolutely. Healy. Graham Kavanagh on to Cunningham. Robbie Keane will attack that with David May. And McNulty comes out to claim it. Maisy strength there just dead uh, Keane off that. Didn't have to really jump there, David May. Just made sure Keane didn't get a right spring. He would put that down to experience there.
And it's great to see that both sides are still looking to stretch the opposition. Typical ball there from uh, Scolzi. Nearly got the young way clear again there. Stephen McManus was alive to that danger. He was. Doyle just took his eyes off that. He'll roll away. Wes Brown will have it as a Manchester United throw. And what's great when we look at the players who've taken to the field today, been a, a few from what Liam Miller picked as his best United 11 in terms of, or best 11 rather, from teams that he played with, with and mm. players that he played with. It included the likes of Gary Neville, Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs. He actually said that Paul Scholes was the best player he ever played with. Yeah, I'm sure there's a few people said that, Dave. Edwin van der Sar included in that, Rio Ferdinand, Patrice Evra, Cristiano Ronaldo, Ruud van Nistelrooy. He also included the Celtic pairing of Bobo Balde and Henrik Larsson. Yeah, two good players, especially the Swede Larsson. Had a great spell at Celtic. Skulls pulling the tricks out, right on cue. Of course, Henrik Larsson played at United as well, didn't he, on Correct. loan? That's right. McKinley to Robbie Keane. Trying to knock it in towards Stephen Kelly, who goes for it. Mark McNulty has the strong hands. Good save. Good spot from Keane and uh, the fullback Kelly get into the box. Great run, good control. Yeah, it's a good save from McNulty. Corner taken quickly and short, and it's Cunningham now. You can hear the organisation there of David May telling everyone to get out. Get out, yeah. Island might be. Sniffing out an equaliser here. Yeah. Got a bit of pressure here now. Scholes you off. The end of the game for now for Paul Scholes. Louis Saha comes back on. <laughs> Louis Saha, who's already tucked one away. Cunningham to read. Controlled calmly by Roy Keane. We've seen a few tackles flying today. I wouldn't have thought anyone will fly in on Roy Keane, will um, they? No, I hope not. Because I'm sure there'll be a reaction, even though it's just, a, as I say, a game like this. I think they've got more sense to do that, Dave. We've talked a lot about uh, the players involved today, but also we've mentioned the fact that money is being raised today, some which will go to the hospice where Liam passed away, some which will go to the family, and it's interesting that some of the Irish football legends, including Jack Charlton and various others, have added €100,000 to the fund. Ah, that's fantastic, that. They had a get-together recently in which Jack was honoured. Liam's old club, the uh, youth club, Ballincollig Youth Club, providing ball boys and ball girls today around the ground. Here's Roy Keane. Michael Clegg making the run. Roy Keane tucks it out to him. Brown now to Fortune. Louis Saha. Sylvester is there to help him out. In towards Saha again, killed it beautifully, and just couldn't quite curl it enough. No, I think he was actually trying to lay off the first time to big Dublin, but it uh, didn't come off, but it fell nicely for him when he tried to curl her there with his uh, right foot past the post. Damian Duff coming on now for Ireland. Stephen McManus will be replaced by Damien Duff. 
Uh, Tosh McKinley, I think, in fact, is going off. Yes, Tosh McKinley, yeah. It's one of those games where when you get told you're going on, you then have to turn around and say, well, where am I playing? Where am I playing? No. Because, uh, you know, Louis Saha, for example, coming on and he's not playing straight through the middle necessarily, sort of coming from midfield. I think Damien, Damien Duff said the same thing there. <laughs> Somebody go to left back, because I'm not. Here's Andy Reid, who was talking a few days ago about the tough spell he's had recently. Both his parents passed away yeah. after illness. Yeah. And Liam Miller, of course, as well, in the middle of that. He also only retired two years ago. There's been a lot to come to terms with in recent times. People sometimes forget about the emotions that you go through as a footballer, particularly one finishing your career. Absolutely. Then you've got to think what your next step is, Dave. Do you stand the game coaching or what do you do? Quentin Fortune knocked over by Kenny Cunningham. Well, we've had three quarters of the game and a little bit more. Manchester United leading, thanks to the Dennis Irwin penalty, and the Louis Saha cool finish in the first half. Robbie Keane getting one back for the Celtic Island side. And Michael Clegg looked up and realised that no one was really making strides in the middle. No, there was no one up there actually, and a lovely layoff there from Dion Dublin. But there was uh, when Clegg was making his run, there was no one in the box at all. Quinton Fortune, does he fancy it? Dion Dublin might give it back. So big Dion might have let it go there, have a shot outside the box, but he tried to return pass to the Quinney, didn't come off. Pace has dropped, obviously, Dave, this second half, you know, with the substitutions coming on as well. Pace does drop. Reunited with a line there of five at the back. It's been sort of three centre halves really since the break with Brown, May, and, and O'Shea. O'Shea, but. Yeah. Fullbacks were in a line with them there for a moment. Solid line of five. Here's Damien Duff, supported by Cunningham, who's yelling for the ball. Puts in a testing cross as well. Robbie Keane makes it his. He shot. He shot Wes Brown in the back there. I'm sure he did. Yeah, it was a push, there was no doubt. I imagine he complained in there to the referee. He did definitely shove him. He shoved Wes. They're not giving many free kicks here today, Dave. Or offsides. No, I suppose, as you'd expect, it's been on the lenient side. Lenient side, yeah. Saha knocks it back for O'Shea. Kel Sylvester, back to Alan Smith. He's popped up all over the place he has, today. He has, he's been everywhere. Just sticking a leg out there to steal the pass away from Damien Duff. Well, Keane taking a chance with Robbie Keane. Yeah. Now Clegg up towards Louis Saha. Stephen McPhail at his back, Andy Reid trying to take it off him in front of him too. Clegg has Dublin and Saha to aim for, John O'Shea joining as well. Nice touch by McPhail. Are we going to uh, see the comeback completed here, do you think, Sammy? Or are we going to see United stretch away, or, or are we done in terms of Well, as I said, here? it's gone a wee bit like at Labour the second half, obviously. Um, but I, I can see, I can see another goal, Dave. I can see another goal. I'm not too sure who it's going to be, but I can see another goal. 
was a good old scrap for the ball. Oh, he's brought him again so fast. Oh, oh not a bad trouble here now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the referee was watching from afar and then thought maybe you should get a little bit closer to the action. Andy Reid, who can certainly hit them. I've seen him do better that in his career from that distance. Is there's when that's Forrest. Well, so many of these players have played on the European stage for various clubs down through the years, particularly, of course, the Manchester United boys. And Robbie Keane taking the law into his own hands there. So best just jokingly saying, give him a card. It's a rugby challenge, this. That's not football. <laughs> <laughs> He's took a little bit of stick himself today, Keane, and um, he gave a bit out there too. Sylvester, we a rugby challenge. It's Saha. In these games, when perhaps the legs get a bit tired, the minds are still sharp, aren't they? You've still got players dropping back into the right positions to oh, accept yeah. the ball. things which we see in the modern game just at a much slower, slower pace. pace absolutely <laughs> Kelly <laughs> Healy up to Robbie Keane Sean Maloney is readying himself to come back on this is Kavanagh It goes towards Robbie Keane, and it might fall here for Cunningham. And McNulty does really well to keep it out, and David May is happy to put it anywhere. Chance. I thought Robbie Keane was going to actually head that, and he tried to bring it down with his chest and basically kick in, but then it fell to Cunningham, and I thought could have done better with the header. I thought Robbie Keane could have headed that. That was a great chance there for, for Cunningham. Meiji to the rescue. Well, Mark McNulty did well to keep that out, didn't yeah, he? But he Cunningham did. shouldn't have given him a prayer. No, no, he should have scored. So Stephen McManus replaced by Sean Maloney. Maloney comes back on for the last 11 minutes. was taken a bit too quickly for the referee, I think, there. Duff. Healy. Maloney. Healy again. Roy Keane just had to be careful there. Yeah, he did. Again, could he have a look at the referee for something? It's actually a whistle. Uh, there's a whistle in the third, I think, it'll be something like that. Plus, in fact, the referee dropped his whistle as well. <laughs> Damien Duff. Andy Reid. Duff again. They're queuing up in the middle here. Didn't quite make it towards Doyle. Duff. Nice flick on by Doyle. Great finish as well. Uh, I could see, I could see another goal coming, David, and uh, it's to Ireland, two-two. It's, it's Colin Healy, and that goal will mean a lot to him. That's it's been fitting. a difficult time. Yeah, big pals. Since the good passing finish. of his great friend Liam yeah. Miller, good and finish, a terrific finish. Absolutely great, good ball in from Duff. Yeah, no chance there, McNulty. Back on terms, 2-2. Two, two. The end of the game for Alan Smith. Nicky Butt returns to the action. Going back to that goal, Liam Miller and Colin Healy were together at Celtic. And they got back together again at Cork City a few years ago when Liam Miller returned to his homeland. 
and I'm a big pal to work with. It's, it's, it's fitting that uh, the boy Healy there should be on the score sheet today. It's quite a footballing journey for Liam Miller when you consider he started professionally at Celtic, went to Manchester United. There was talk that Liverpool made a late bid to sign Liam Miller just as Manchester United were tying up the deal for him. He went on loan to Leeds. He signed for his boyhood hero and ex-United teammate Roy Keane at Sunderland. Made a massive contribution to promotion to the Premier League there. A big goal against Derby County, which helped them along the way. Queen's Park Rangers, Hibs, Perth Glory, Brisbane Raw, Melbourne City. Yeah. He's had, uh, he's slicing had, that back. He's had a few clubs, as you say, Dave, you know, and um, he's been respected in the, the, the game for, uh, for people to want him to play for all those clubs. Had a brief spell out in the US as well with Wilmington Hammerheads before he started coaching. It was just a shame when he came here, David, uh, we had such good players in front of him. Robbie Keane with the strike. Not for the first time today. Mark McNulty right behind it. Actually, Ireland are finishing the stronger here. Well, they are the fresher, aren't they? Yeah, there's They've no doubt made about more that. changes. They're actually coming on strong here, there's no doubt about it. Dion Dublin, or rather, Dion lost the ball, I think. Quinton Fortune with a swing and a miss in the middle yeah. of the park. This is Kelly. Mikel Silvestre standing strong. Now the substitutions that they're all that they've brought on, the likes of uh, Duff coming on again, forward player who's causing a little bit of problems at the moment. There's one team that looks like winning, and it's uh, it's Ireland. Duff's touch to Healy, back again to Duff. Into Fortune once again having a nibble. Keen told to shoot. Maybe Kevin Doyle will. He chance. does, but it's not one of his best. That was a chance. Great little play by Robbie Keane here. Lovely little pass through, and, and he should hit the target at least there. Doyle, if that had been the other way around, rolls reverse, I'm sure Keane would have hit the target. Well, Robbie wanted it back. Didn't he wanted he? it back, yeah. I wonder if he would have given it back had it been. No. The other way around. I don't think so. Well, we were talking before about the fact that a lot of these players have played in Europe. A lot for Manchester United, of course. Liam Miller's breakthrough at Celtic really came in the Champions League, a group game against French champions Lyon at home. He came off the bench in the second half and scored the opening goal. Here's Damien Duff looking to get another goal for his side for Robbie Keane, who was hovering I think Robbie Keane wanted a chip there back back post where Duff actually went for the near post but they are finishing stronger day of Ireland there's no doubt about that it's all been in the United South this last, last 10 minutes Duff's corner back it goes to Andy Reid the last five minutes of the game Nicely done by Maloney. Doyle on the turn. This is Robbie Keane. They were all trying to get in the way, and eventually they weren't required after the strike from Maloney. Yeah, good, good defending there by uh, Wes Brown there. Robbie Keane made lovely space for himself. Looks as if he's going to shoot, and then actually comes off young Clegg and Wes Brown, that block. They are certainly coming back strongly at Manchester yep. United towards the end of this. The Irish, and yeah. the Celtic and Ireland team. They've had the best, they've had the better of the second half, there's no doubt about that. As you say, they brought on eight changes at the start of the second half. Fresher legs, beginning to tell now. <laughs> Sylvester back to John O'Shea. Fortune to butt and now Keane Sylvester for fortune Saha looking to release Clegg but wasn't quite aware of 
where he was. And in the 87th minute, we get the first Mexican wave that's really taken off. There have been a few that have been started they've here tried, today. They've tried to get it going. And with three minutes to go, or four minutes to go, they finally got it right. Oh, now, he's is there a flag? No, there isn't. Mark McNulty came out. The referee had a long look to see if he used the hand. Have we got an assistant referee in this set? I'm not too sure because he hasn't had that flag up all second half. <laughs> he might have been put off by the Mexican wave. I maybe. think he might have been waving himself, I think. Needless to say, we haven't got VAR today. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Doyle to Keane. Will we see a late winner in this one? We certainly saw plenty from United in the first half, and we've seen plenty from the Irish in the Celtic second half. Ireland yeah, combination no, no in the doubt, second. No, no doubt about that. to play and then Sylvester was cool and calm and found Roy Keane. Good defending there from Sylvester. Again good football by the Irish team and uh, good defending there by Sylvester. Cool under pressure. Well there is a gala dinner tonight which the players will attend and which more money will be raised as they continue to look back on the fond memories of Liam Miller, the player who is talked of in Celtic circles as someone who always smashed the bleep test, a horrible fitness test that no one really likes to do, but he seemed to take it well and truly in his stride. Kevin Doyle just behind Kelly towards Robbie Keane. One of the strong points in his, uh, his game, Dave, was his fitness. Always on the go, always wanted the ball. Reed to Duff. And now Doyle. Lovely ball in by Duff. It was Wes Brown who just managed to nudge that away for a corner. Yeah. He was. Oh, he doesn't think he. He doesn't think he said it. It, uh, it definitely came off Wes Brown there, but uh, the officials didn't see that. Nicky Butt. That's it. It's the end of 90 minutes in which the clock has been well and truly turned back. Many great memories have been relived of those involved in their heyday. The final score is 2-2. Two, two. But that's very much a subplot here. This was about celebrating the life and times of a player who sadly wasn't on the pitch. For someone who stood... A mere five foot five, Liam Miller made a big impression on the game. Those who played it and those who watched on too. This day belongs to his family. In the end, 2 2 was about right in the end, I think. Great to see. Very competitive. I thought as the, as the half wore on, the slightly, maybe slightly younger Celtic Republic of Ireland side. We're having the better of it. I think I think Manchester United were rather happier to hear the final whistle. Yeah, they were hanging on in there at the end, the Man United lads, and fair play to them. There was a lot of tired legs. They didn't make as many substitutions, I think, as the Ireland and Celtic team. 
uh, and a 2-2 result was probably a fair result. Everyone happy? Yeah, full house, um, got to see some good stuff as well. Uh, we got to see Roy Keane come on as well, but we didn't see a Roy Keane thunderous challenge. I was a bit disappointed about no. that. No, <laughs> he made up for him though, didn't he? He certainly he did. He left a few yeah. in the heat. But uh, no, it was, uh, it was nice to see them kind of lads come on and, and have a run around. I'm sure they enjoyed it. Colin Healy got the, the goal to make it 2-2 um, in this second half. And obviously that's a nice touch, isn't it? Because he was such a good mate. Of he him. was. I was, uh, I was pleased for Colin. He looked great, I have to say. He came on and had a right go and he looked like he really enjoyed himself. And for him to score the equaliser was probably fitting because he was a good friend of Liam's. Um, and it was, a, it was a nice way to finish the game. Yeah, and no one could uh, force a winner in the end. Uh, in the first half, I remember Dennis Irwin slotting home a penalty for Manchester United to make it 1 0 after Nicky Butt was fouled, shall we say. Um, then Louis Saha made it 2 and United were in control. Um, Robbie Keane make it 2 1. And the second half, in many ways, um, did belong to the, uh, the Celtic Republic of Ireland side. And I think you can't argue with the fact that it deserved the draw, Colin Healy getting it, making it 2-2. And great to see some wonderful old players, including some great Manchester United legends and members of the, the class of 92 as well. So let's take a look at the goals in case you missed them. The first one was a, was a penalty kick. Um, this was Nicky Butt going down under the challenge of Mialby, and he made the most of it. He did, he did. He, uh, I said at half-time, I'm sure he hurt the old knees there, Nicky, the way he went over. But a good run into the box, nice little dink over the defender as he dives in and, yeah, he's, it's a penalty, isn't it? The defender's dived in and when like Dennis Irwin... Like yeah, that. arms outstretched, he's, all the mannerisms. He's made sure he's got it, that's for sure. But Dennis stepping up, as we've seen many times over the years. Lovely, pe lovely penalty and nice for Dennis to score a goal in Cork as well, where, of, where he was from, obviously. And nice goal for him there. Yeah, it was never in doubt, really, as he strode up, knocked it into the corner, and the man of Cork making it 1-0. And at the age of 52, he was, well, he was as good as anybody on that pitch. He was fantastic. He? He's kept himself in great nick. We said earlier, I spoke to my old man, and I told him Dennis was playing, and he was shocked. He couldn't believe it, because there's no way he could run around the football <laughs> pitch. No. But, uh, yeah, fair play to Dennis. He did very well. Yeah, so that was 1-0, and the 1-0 soon became 2. Uh, this was Louis Saha, who was uh, had a bit too much in terms of pace for, for Richard Dunn, but Ryan Giggs with a, a super through ball. Lovely ball and a lovely curved run by Saha. He kept himself on side, and he's run the uh, half length of the pitch there. <laughs> I think he was shattered by the time he got into the 18-yard box, but he still managed to uh, find the bottom corner with his right foot. Nice little finish. Yeah, he had a lot of time. <laughs> A lot of time to think about it. Might have been running Some dodgy out of gas. Defending, and we did see a few defenders struggling to get back through the course of the game. Didn't we, we certainly <laughs> did. And that was just a little shove there, but that's all he could do by the time he got there. But it's a good finish by Louis to make it two 0 and the United are in command at that point. But when Robbie Keane plays, he does tend to score, doesn't he? What a wonderful goal-scoring record he's got for for his club and country over the course of his career. And we've seen him cut in like this and score plenty of times. Yeah, again. Defender's a little bit slow at getting back, but once he shifts the ball onto his right foot, how many times have you seen Robbie Keane do that over the years? Cut inside and nice little finish for him. It'll be nice for... I'm sure he enjoyed that goal himself, Robbie. Yeah, went underneath the goalkeeper, but it's so... Uh, so difficult for the keeper when it's not that far out. Kept it low, hard shot underneath him. Yeah, and right down by the keeper's feet, where he's very difficult to get, to get down. And... Unfortunately for Man United, Pilkington couldn't quite get hold of it. So, yeah, nice little finish for Robbie, and yeah, he did well. He he played really well. He, he still looks like he could probably play now, Robbie. To be fair to him. Yeah. So that was two one, and then it was two two for Colin Healy. We'll see that in a moment. But because it was a draw, it's a penalty shootout. <coughs> so let's take a look at it, shall we? Yes. Welcome back. We are going to have a penalty shootout to decide a winner here. And Robbie Keane will start us. McNulty chooses the right way. Tired legs are from there. Uh, once you stop, you see, and he played all the game keen as well, and they saw that that looked a tired penalty kick that did. Here's Maisie, he won't miss, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I think some of these players, and indeed quite a lot of us around the ground, are surprised that we're going to penalties. Absolutely, absolutely. I didn't think I didn't think it was needed to be honest with you, but I suppose it's good for the crowd, Dave. Give them something to 
laugh maybe about or David May right down the middle what have you got in your locker there you go right down the middle and he's looking at the goalkeeper and saying I told you where I was putting it <laughs> he'll live off that for a long time oh now, without he? a doubt gave the keeper the eyes what a Maisie Andy Reid up next now in his day he could really strike them he was good at them wasn't he rarely missed normally with plenty of force too Kiss of death, there we are, kiss of death. <laughs> Was applied the wrong way. Actually, we're on a Gaelic pitch here, aren't we? That would have been so a great a Gaelic one. one, yeah, one. It's a goal. one, one. <laughs> oh, dear. Roy Keane. Don't miss, Roy, in your hometown, don't miss. Now, if you were the goalkeeper, you'd just let it in, wouldn't you? Yeah. Roy Keane in Cork with the armband. Saved. Oh, Roy, Roy, Roy. And he is giving David Ford the eyes there. The script seemed like it was written. That was. Kevin Doyle, next up for those in green. Well, he scored plenty of goals in his career. And there's another one. Lovely, confident ten. Done in style. What's that now, Dave? That is 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. One, one after three from those in green and two from those in red. Next up will be Nicky Butt. Can he follow the example set by David May? It's not often you say that. No, <laughs> exactly. I can't see Butty missing, to be fair. Oh, oh, oh he has. God. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, David was, Ford once again. That was a weak pen, Nicky. Well, when a youngster misses a penalty now, he's... <laughs> he's got no comeback. Uh, like a daisical pen, that was. Six penalties taken, and only two of them have found the net. Sean Maloney up next. Oh, big run up. Oh, what a pen. Fearsome strike there, wasn't it? Lovely pen. So we must score here. Is that well, right? there's any, no, we've got another chance if it goes wrong from this. All oh, right. 2-1 to the Celtic Island team with four taken by them. Louis Saha comes up to keep Manchester United in proceedings. Another one who was deadly in front of goal during his career. Already scored during the game. Yeah. No mistake at all, 2-2. Two, two. Lovely pen. So now, effectively, sudden death starts here in penalty terms. We're going to see Ian Hart, who was so good from set plays from outside the box. He took them for leads, didn't he? Yeah. Which top bin is it? Mark Putnolte <laughs> says to him. <laughs> one of those players if he was taking a penalty or a free kick for your team you, you just knew it was going and you could just sort of walk back to halfway not on this occasion though what a save Mark McNulty scampered across his line there oh, good save so there is a chance now for Manchester United to win it and for Dion Dublin if we score here, do we win it now? Indeed, that would be a victory. Come on, big man. Maybe 
maybe the stage is there for Dublin to win it in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dion Dublin, chance to win it, and a chance he takes. Celtic and Ireland two, Manchester United three from the spot. My thanks to Sammy McElroy for being alongside me. We'll hand you back to Stuart Gunn. Well, that's a nice way to end it, wasn't it? As Dave said there, Dublin winning it in Ireland. 3-2 on penalties. David May also slotting home. You won't hear the last of that, will you? No. May's he scoring his pen. No. Roy Keane missing. There's a few I mean, headlines in there, wasn't there? Would anyone give Roy a rollicking after that? I'm not so sure. Probably not. There was a few tired legs, in fairness, wasn't there? Yes. Nicky Butts was a very tired penalty. It, <laughs> yeah, it was. But 3-2 on penalties in the end, United. Um, getting through after a really competitive two-all draw. Dion, these days a TV star, of course, getting the congratulations of David May, two of the successful Manchester United penalty takers. And Roy Keane, who was not a successful Manchester United penalty taker. But 3-2, and I think, I don't know, I think it's good to, it's good to get a result in the end, I guess. Yeah, of course. I mean, in games like this, the result doesn't matter, of course, but for uh, Man United to get the, the, uh, the win, they'll be happy. But it's been a great occasion. Look at the fans still there, 45,000 of them. And I'm sure tonight all those lads will go and have a, a well-deserved night out and uh, at, the, at the gala dinner and raise as much money as they possibly can. Well, 45,000 people showed up to this one, a complete um, sellout, and there's now going to be a little a lap of honour or a hobble of honour for the uh, two sets of players who are making their way round. Gary Neville, who uh, entertained us, particularly in that first half, with a couple of, shall we say, wayward shots. But everybody stayed behind. Everybody stayed behind to applaud the players and they're reciprocating because for this game to work, you needed a crowd and you couldn't have asked more than a 45,000 sellout. Fantastic turnout. It's not often you get the, uh, the chance to see some of the old stars playing. So, obviously, with being Man United in Ireland as well, getting a chance to see them, as well as the Ireland and Celtic legends, it's a, it's a great occasion. And as I said earlier on, something that Liam fully deserved. What do you think of Maisie's defending? Very static. <laughs> <laughs> there was a few times when the ball got played down the side of him where he just stood still. But, uh, no, he did OK. Listen, in all seriousness, they all did well. It's not easy when you've not played for a number of years and fair play to the lads, they've all put in a good shift and there'll be some tired bodies tonight, I'm sure. It must be very, very strange for the Manchester United players to walk round in the stadium with you'll never walk alone booming out. Know. Someone's taking the mick there, aren't it's they? It's not playing. I know it's obviously a Celtic anthem as well, but uh, that, is not, um, that probably sticks in the throat of some of those Manchester United legends, particularly the uh, class of 92 boys as well. And some of those guys still looked as though they could still do it, as could... Dennis Irwin, who scored in the first half, and, uh, well, was excellent. He was, he was. There was a few good performances. Sylvester played well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the midfield, Nicky Butt, Scholes, as you can imagine, never really loses it with his, with his technique and the way he spreads the ball around. Ryan, still as fit as a lot. Yeah. Uh, and even Roy, when he come on, and yeah. he, uh, he looked well, got around the pitch, and now, as I say, they all, they all did very well. Yeah, so the lads will be uh, walking around and having a a well-earned break. We're going to have a well-earned break as well. When we come back, we'll be getting some reaction from Cork as United beat the Celtic Republic of Ireland side 3-2 on penalties after a two-all draw in the Liam Miller tribute game. years ago this season, United made history. They always score. Into Sheringham, and Solskjaer has won it! And you can relive every minute of the famous treble season on MUTV. From the moments of doubt... Middlesbrough claim a famous victory! ...to those moments that made us United fans dream. Great run here by Ryan Giggs! Oh, what a goal! Every game, win or lose, on the day they happened, 20 years on. 
football, bloody hell. Treble 20, this season on MUTV. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we're going to get some reaction from the uh, Liam Miller tribute game, which finished 2-2 after 90 minutes, and then United winning at 3-2 on penalties. Dion Dublin stroking home the, uh, the winning penalty. Um, before we went to penalties, we were showing you the goals, but we didn't show you the equaliser. Colin Healy with a fine strike to make it 2-2. Yeah, it was a lovely finish from Colin. He impressed me as much as anybody when he came on. Uh, he was a good friend of mine, Colin. I played with him at Ipswich, and he was... a. Uh, a very, very good pal of Liam Miller's and great finish, got his head over the ball and never seen him do that for Ipswich, so <laughs> getting better with age, Carl. Yeah, he looks as though he could still do a job, actually. Yeah, he's, he was a very, very good player. He, he had a tough time with injuries um, in the early part of his career. I think he broke his leg twice um, trying to come back and, yeah, he was an excellent player. Yeah. And also, McNulty made a couple of saves as well as the, the Republic side were <laughs> getting on top as the game wore on, shall we say, in the second half. Keeper did great, didn't he? He kept Man United in it towards the end. He made some good saves and be a day he will, uh, he won't, he'll remember for a long, long time. He was, uh, he was great and he was very good in the penalty shootout as well. Yeah, no, he did very well. Um, but you felt as the game wore on, uh, it was going to become more likely that the Republic might nick it. That's a good save, though, isn't it? Very good, good save, yeah. As we said, the United lads, Maisie there in particular, yeah. was getting tired towards the end. He certainly was. Um, he made another save, actually, later on in the game as well. This, that, this has gone in, it might well have been a, a, a winner. But again, showing his, um, his class with a save here. Yeah. I think Robbie Keane controlled that with his chin, but <laughs> bad miss from uh, Kenny Cunningham. But yeah, great save from the keeper. Should you put it across me? I know it's easy for us to say. Yeah, it was a me. defender's finish, wasn't it? I don't want to say that. It didn't <laughs> didn't seem quite it. right. Defender's finish. Don't know what Maisie was doing now. It was going to have been an assist for Maisie at the wrong end. Yeah. <laughs> he got away with it in the end. Anywhere will do in the Anywhere end. Anywhere will do, yeah. Yeah. He did very, did very well, the keeper. Yeah. And Maisie getting involved. And Robbie Keane also in an effort. Um, well, this was in the final 10 minutes as well. And you can see all of the opportunities and all the attacking play was coming at, at one end, shall we say. It was backs to the walls. I mean, I think you can see there, there was about six at the back for Man United at the end. And they were hanging on. It did look like Ireland were going to push on and get, a, get the winner, but 
I think the keeper ultimately kept them in it. Yeah. But in the end, it finished 2-2, and um, we needed a result, so it went to penalties. United winning 3-2 on penalties, Dion Dublin stroking home. Did we give Maisie a bit of stick? We stroked home his penalty as well. So yeah, you'd be happy with that. And respect to his Roy missed one as well. Yeah, lovely yeah. little penalty. You guys, his, uh, his colleagues here at MUTV, won't, won't hear the last of that, will you? But, uh, no. Yeah, good, good penalty from Maisie. Yeah. And, and Dion to, to finish it was, uh, was a nice little way to, for the United lads to finish. So the man who stroked home the winning penalty was Dion Dublin. He's talking to Sully. Uh, Dion, firstly, a fantastic turnout to uh, yes. honour the memory of Liam today. Listen, look around the stadium, that's absolutely jam-packed. Not an empty seat in the house, everybody's enjoying themselves. and We came for the right reasons, you know, and I'm really glad that all the boys turned up, you know. A lot of old pros turned up for the right reasons, and it's all about the Miller family, all about the Miller family. Yeah, the calibre of player that turned up just goes to show uh, how high a regard Liam was held in. Listen, he's a fellow professional, he's one of us, and you don't often see this in footballers, you, you normally see footballers, and we get some, some of the footballers get a bad rep, big cars, big houses, don't give a damn about anybody else. But under the surface, we're very close. Yeah, it was a really entertaining game as well. Yeah, Two goals great, apiece, great. and then they got the penalty shoot out of the drama of that. Strange thing is, the referee said to me at 2 1, this is going to be 2 2. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, hold it a minute, ref. But listen, it's great, fantastic turnout. Well done to everybody for coming, and uh, well done for the boys, and Keeney and uh, Martin O'Neill for organising it, you know. Liam, you're not forgotten, son. Uh, just one more thing. I've got to ask you about your winning penalty. I'll let you into a secret. I was going the other way <laughs> until the keeper moved and then I changed at the last minute. They teach you know to do that. My groin's a bit sore. Cheers, <laughs> Dion, thanks. They always say, don't change your mind. Don't change your mind when you're taking a penalty. But it worked for him. Well, exactly. I was always brought up, don't change your mind in the run-up, but it's worked for Dion and he'll be happy with that, as you can see, scoring the winning penalty. Some people won't realise that he was a footballer, not just a TV presenter and a personality. He was a footballer and he still, he still got it as well. He looked yeah, he was a handful. He was a good player. He was actually unfortunate at Manchester United when he yeah, broke his he leg broke early his leg. doors. And some people say if he didn't break his leg... Alex Ferguson might never have signed Eric Cantona, so yeah. it was a turn up for the books, wasn't it? But um, no, it was an excellent footballer, had a good career. Had a spell at Celtic as well, won the league with Celtic, uh, I think back in 2004. So uh, yeah, had a very, very good career. He's, he's gone on to a TV personality yeah. now, hasn't he? So Absolutely. Doing well for himself. Well, obviously, it's been a big day of uh, football on MUTV because later on here this evening at Old Trafford, uh, United begin their Carabao Cup campaign with a visit of Frank Lampard's derby. And it's amazing how Jose Mourinho faced a former manager here at the weekend in Nuno for Wolves. Three days later, he's facing a, f a former player again in, in Frank Lampard. Yeah, it'll be strange for him, won't it, seeing, uh, seeing Frank coming as a manager. But it'll be a great occasion for Frank as well, coming to a, an arena like this to pick his wits against Mourinho. And it'll be a, it'll be a tough game. Derby have had some good results. They had a good result of the weekend. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a, a tough game for you for United and Derby, but a good chance for a few, uh, few players to get a run out as well. Yeah, um, and Jose Mourinho takes domestic cups seriously, he always has done. Yeah. He'll be wanting to win, he'll be wanting to win this competition, won't he? Well, Manchester United are expected to win every trophy they compete in, aren't they? So he'll be taking it serious, I'm sure he'll give it an opportunity for a, a few legs, as I say, a few lads, as I say, to get a run out, get some minutes under their belt, but he'll be taking it serious, that's for sure. Yeah, and, and bear in mind that we played Derby in the FA Cup, the start of our FA Cup campaign last year. Played Derby, that ended up at Wembley in the end, and that's where we, we want to be again in this competition. The good thing about this competition is if you're a club playing in Europe, you come in in the third round. You'd have to go through rounds one or two and suddenly win a couple of games and you're in the semi your quarters and semi-finals. Exactly, and when you get to the quarter-finals, semi-finals of any competition, it's, uh, you want to go on and win it. And, as you can see in the last few years, United have uh, done OK in this competition and I'm sure they'll be looking to do OK again uh, this season. Yeah, I suppose Frank Lampard's um, main thing is promotion, isn't it? Derby, who've been so long in the Championship. This isn't a priority, I guess, but nah. when he's facing his former manager, you yeah. know... He... He'll want to do well, but it's more of an occasion for the Derby lads to come and play a, a fantastic arena like this. They're the underdogs, they can come and enjoy it, the pressure's off, and I'm sure they'll enjoy it, as I say. Yeah. What are you going for tonight and overall? What's your what's your your? I fancy instinct? a Manchester United win. I'm going to go for three one. Yeah, and just a reminder tonight in in the Carabao Cup, um, a bit like today, the, the 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 tribute game. There's no extra time. If it's a draw after 90 minutes, it goes straight to penalties. 
and also we have the joy of VAR as well. So there's bound to be some sort of VAR controversy um, this evening. But uh, fingers crossed United get the victory and uh, get through to the next round. And the draw for the next round, by the way, is on Saturday for some strange reason. There you go. Now, a reminder that we are on air for 90 minutes before the 90 minutes. So our build-up starts 6.30 this evening. Join me and Mickey Thomas pitch side for build-up to the game, which starts, of course, at 8 o'clock. But um, thank you very much for your company. Thanks for watching on, on YouTube and Facebook as well. Thanks, actually. We really, really do appreciate your company. No problem. But the result, in the end, didn't really matter. Is the fact that 45,000 people came together to celebrate the life of Liam Miller. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody. We'll